And so when I say Chinese, I want you to scream out the, na the nation that's associated with this. For example, if I say Chinese, you're going to say what? China. All right, let's say it with authority. When I say Chinese, you say what? China. All right, that's just a, a test right there. So here we go. Chinese. China. Russian. Russian. Italian. Italy. German. German. Swedish. Swedish. Korean. Korean. Egyptian. Egypt. Nigerian. I hope you were able to successfully identify the issue. The lion won't sleep tonight. Cause we woke now. And we woke now. I said the lion won't sleep tonight. Cause we woke now. And we woke now. They want us to sell our souls to butter profit Like God's property, it's hard to market So we steady to aim, keep your eyes on target Cause when you got to drive, yeah, they'd rather you park it But I don't valet, you ain't getting these keys I'm keeping close hands, I'm on bending knee I'm just a reflection, dealing with eight sections Art mixed with life, you can feel the convection You lie and won't sleep The same people that have stripped us of our identity and labeled us as a, as a color have told us what it means to be black. The white man is enacting a story all over the world. Mm -hmm. we, we left our homes and flooded the world. We smothered culture. We smothered knowledge. We erased history and rewrote it our way. Myself, I 100, or my grandfather is 100% Ashkenazi Jewish, claiming to be Jewish. Ashkenazi Jewish is just a conspiracy. White men claiming to be of tribes of Israel when I'm Germanic, you know, I, yeah. I have no ties to Israel, no ties to Judaism, you know, except, except loosely written history that's been whitewashed over for centuries, and, you know. It's, From the Renaissance. Oh yeah, right. You just you you wipe everything clean. It's funny how yeah, exactly the Renaissance. It's this rebirth, but it's it's white rebirth. I think at the same exact time the Renaissance is happening, Columbus is sailing to America and committing Ooh. genocide. There's only one true ethnic Jew, the Mizrahi Jew, because they are Africans. And if you read the original Bible written in Phoenician Hebrew, they're not Jewish people. Are not. Europeans. The modern Jews in Israel are Russians from, or Khazars to be precise, from <laughs> Russia. I learned it from my grandfather that he was a, because he was an Ashkenazi Jew. The same people that have stripped us of our identity and labeled us as a, as a color have told us what it means to be black. You know, you know what you are? Are you are an ancient Israelite. Ancient Israelite. Right? Yeah, that's who we are. That's who we are. Sure, you can give me time. Yeah. If you give me time. But, 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 I know, I know. We don't have. There are so many years. I know, I know. Look, look at this. This is pages and pages of yes. notes. And I promise we'll give more yes. teaching. But here is my challenge to you. All right. I'm hearing some of your traditions. It's like the days of the Bible. Yes. Do you want to remain ancient Israelites? Or you want to be Jews? Do you want to remain ancient Israelites? Or you want to be Jews? Do you want to re I'm hearing some of your traditions. It's like the days of the Bible. Yes. Do you want to remain ancient Israelites? Or you want to be Jews? That is the question I have for you. Thank you. I'll answer that question. Go, Go ahead. ahead. I will help you. After the demise of Solomon, we now have the northern and southern kingdom of Israel. 
Yes. So when we talk about Jews, Jews are Israelites. But all Israelites are not Jews. The ten tribes that got lost are not Jews. They were Israelites. Jews are Israelites. But all Israelites are not Jews. The ten tribes that got lost are not Jews. They were Israelites. Jews are Israelites. But all Israelites are not Jews. The ten tribes that got lost are not Jews. They were Israelites. So when we talk about Jews, Jews are Israelites. But all Israelites are not Jews. The ten tribes that got lost are not Jews. They were Israelites. Well, it's depending. So the well, well, minority cannot swallow the majority. We are here. We are the majority <laughs> down here. So you are minority. And we are older than you. The same people that have stripped us of our identity and labeled us as a, as a color have told us what it means to be black. Why do you think that the U.S. is so quick to go help Israel fight against the Palestines? Why? They know that the Jewish people in Israel are not the original people. Oh, no, no, no. They are definitely not. The original people are black people and people of color. So why did one lady, Judith Shore, she was Israeli consul, say that the biggest threat in Israel is the younger, younger black community. What, why do they feel so threatened? Why, why? Because you know why? They know that the black people were the original chosen ones. The original ones that were there. The people over there now, they took over all that land, just like they're trying to take over all of Palestine. They have taken so much land from Palestine also, but watch what this lady says about the black community being Israel's biggest problem. The black community being Israel's biggest problem. The black community being Israel's biggest problem. The major problem of Israel is with the young. The major problem of Israel is with the young generation of the black community. Black Lives Matter starts there. I had last week a dinner, sit down dinner in my house with some of the people which are considered the leadership of the black community. I have I have said to people when they ask me if this capital crumbled to the ground, the one thing that would remain is our commitment to our aid, and I don't even call it aid, our cooperation with Israel. Because that's fundamental, our cooperation with Israel. Because that's fundamental, our cooperation. Today, it is prohibited, and you can Google this, to do a DNA test in Israel, totally forbidden, wrong. It's illegal, it's a crime, you'll be jailed if you do a DNA test in Israel. Why? Because they know the truth will come out. You come from Poland, you come from Ukraine, you came from Europe, you came from everywhere else. And they were the original Middle Eastern Jews who lived together with the Muslims and the Christians for centuries, for centuries. So what happened to a lot of the Jews? Planned Parenthood was made by Margaret Sanger, a known eugenics with the KKK to control the Jew population. When I say Jew, I mean the 12 lost tribes of Judah, the blood of Christ, who the race, the people known as the race black really are. Uh, the entire Bible is about black people. Um, not only was Jesus black, but every character in the Bible seems to be black too. Yeah, Zephaniah and Jeremiah and Jebediah, those, those all aren't white people names, okay? Um, and Jesus wasn't some tan, partially melanated Middle Eastern person either. I'm talking straight up black dude, okay? Even in the book of Revelation, when you get the vision of Daniel, he's describing someone with feet like burnt brass and white woolly hair and we've got the deep running 
water voice with the the red eyes and uh, you guys he's black the jewish people are black people like kanye was right for the righteous they are, they exist in the world to come and they're rewarded and for those whose major complexion is black are excluded from the world to come major complexion is black are excluded from the world to come major complexion is black are excluded from the world to come for the righteous they are they exist in the world to come and they're rewarded and for those whose major complexion is black are excluded from the world to come genesis chapter 11 verse 10 explains the genealogy of shem shem was a black man in africa if you repeat this fact they can't laugh at you if you repeat this fact they can't laugh at want to say peace and blessings to everyone let me adjust my mic here adjust my seat and my tablet here want to say peace and blessings to everyone uh want to say shout outs to all you guys for the love and support uh really appreciate uh all what you guys have been ha have have done to get the channel to where it is right now i mean i, uh, I think we're uh just short of of a couple of hundred subscribers to uh, go over, officially go over the 50,000 subscriber mark. And um, I want to tell you guys, I really uh, appreciate you guys, really appreciate you guys for the love and support. And um, if you're not subscribed to the channel, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And if you are subscribed to the channel, double check to make sure that you are still subscribed to the channel. Because YouTube, uh, you know, they've been unsubscribing people from this channel without without that person knowing. So even if you are subscribed to the channel, don't assume. Just go ahead and just, uh, you know, just just uh, double check and hit again, hit that subscriber button, uh, hit that like button as well. And um, so. But yeah, family, we got a lot that we're going to cover tonight. Uh, going to try to keep it simple as at the same time. As a matter of fact, before we go on, let me drop this link to just in case uh, my cousin want to jump in. Let me see here. Let me drop. Let me send him this link. All right. And we'll get into the lesson here. Let me copy this link over. All right, let's see here. Actually, let me do a new message. All right, just want to get this over to him. All right, but yeah, we got a lot to cover tonight. I'm going I'm to keep it simple. This is not the full presentation. I was trying to put it together. I didn't have really a lot of time to put it together like I want to put together. I want to really, you know, get some additional DNA information. Uh, also, I wanted to upload uh, some additional testimonies from others uh, teaching what each and every one of us know. You know, we know who's who. And have you guys noticed that uh, more and more, especially over these past few years, you start really seeing a, an assertive effort to try to cover up lies, you know, cover up the lies about, uh, you know, who we are and, and who they are. You know, more and more we're hearing from that community. When I say that community, not this Israel, but that Israeli group over there, you know, uh, the, the people that are, you know, uh, saying that they are the original people. Have you noticed that more and more you're hearing them say uh, stuff like this? I'll play this clip real quick. I'll let you I'll let I'll let you hear with your own ears. And some of you guys probably remember this clip here. But I'm going to share it again. Uh, saying saying stuff like this, like back in the day, we would call it talking out your neck. Does having Jewish DNA determine your Jewish status? Great question. 
The answer is, your Judaism is determined by your mother. If your mom's Jewish, you're Jewish according to traditional Judaism. Now, you could have a very high count of Jewish DNA, and that's awesome. That means you're connected to the Jewish people, but it doesn't necessarily mean you're Jewish. Don't forget, there are people that convert to Judaism, and they have zero DNA, and they're 100% Jewish. See, this should be a problem. This should stir up some thoughts. This should stir up some people within the church. But of course, they are part of the delusion. This should stir up questions. Because this is proving that being a Jew, according to the uh, law of return and, and what you just heard, it has nothing to do with your DNA being connected to the, you know, originating in the land. It has everything to do with a religious system. And that's similar to um, Christianity, Christianity and Catholicism. That's the same thing with replacement, the same tenets of replacement theology. So literally what that person said, right? Because the reason why he says some, you know, even, you know, going through the DNA and they see that they have a connection to the Jews per se. But what he's saying is, even if you have a, con a connection, right, a DNA connection with the Jewish community, as we know them, that you are still not Jewish because you are not practicing the religion. See, when you go back and um, I have it here, if you Google or I mean, go into the YouTube search portion of the channel, go to the video section. I got I got to put uh, create some additional playlists, even some of the interviews that I've done and some of the just all my playbooks, just consolidate them. So that way I could put it in a playlist. I didn't realize I had so many videos, but you'll see a rabbi by the name of Shapira. And when he's interviewing the Ebos. You know, he, he he says to them, well, you know, well, you know, I mean, we, we got pages of pages, right? Pages that, 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 yeah, yeah, you, 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 the tribe of God, you had the tribe of God, even though they said, no, we have all the tribes here, but, but the tribe of God, right? That's what he said, tribe of God. So. But, 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 well, the concern is that you were no longer practicing Torah. So you will have to go through a conversion process. In other words, telling the original that you have to, that they have to go through a conversion process to embrace a religion and get a piece of paper from them saying, yeah, you are now one of the converts or proselytes, if we want to use the pro proper term. You know, if you look at the f full uh, interview he did with them, right? You know, that's the thing, trying to get them to practice something that's already theirs. That's the same thing with the Limba, because I have the full interview that he did with the Limba. You know, wanting to indoctrinate them to a religion called Judaism. Same thing with the uh, the Hebrews that are up in uh, Ethiopia. They want to do the same thing with them. Have them transition over, convert to something that's already theirs. So Judaism is a religion. It's not an ethnicity. It's a religion created by a particular group. And we'll get into that in a second. We'll get in it. We'll get into that in a second. So, you know, that's the that's the playbook. See, whenever there, especially when you go into the, the you know, like the 18th, 19th century, you'll see a lot of. Uh, whenever there's a tribe that is discovered, right, a, a Hebrew tribe that is discovered, what they would do is they would send representatives there, right, and then try to indoctrinate them to something that's already theirs. Uh, you know, uh, 
And one thing, and I and I didn't have I don't have time to put it inside this presentation, but the uh, the courts of Israel said that the Ethiopian Israelites don't have to be forced into practicing Judaism because it's proven that hey they are descendants of the original people. I have to I have to I have to put that put that in here. Um, do that over the next probably the next few days. So, family, this is why I really want to do this lesson here. And uh, my apologies for not having all my notes here, not being able to put everything into this presentation in terms of the sources and, you know, like how I do. But I have enough to, to for us to, to go into what we need to go into. Now, some of this is going to be uh, a reiteration of the. Uh, information that I've already presented in terms of some of the sources. And if you guys, some of you guys that have been following me long enough know that I'm going to keep repeating certain sources. Why? Because the scripture told, uh, according to the scriptures, the most high told Moses to rehearse in the ears of Joshua, right? So we have to learn how to rehearse the information. You know, I when we made that transition out of Christianity in terms of our assembly, the Most High had me preach the same message for almost four years. And the people in the assembly will tell you. Guess what? I mean, they almost had, had the message memorized. Right. So. I'm going to continue to regurgitate or re, uh, uh, rehearse certain sources to you guys so that way it helps you and reminds you of how to properly articulate. This information to whomever you may come in contact with. All right. So we got a lot to cover here. So let's go ahead and stretch this out. I don't want to take too much of your time as far as getting into uh, what we need to get into, but I just want to at least uh, set this up here and apologize to you guys. Again, if you're not subscribed to the channel, uh, hit the like and subscribe to the channel. And matter of fact, let me do a couple of things here. Let me make sure I can connect to uh, YouTube through my browser. So that way, if I need to do a post a, a question, I can post a question to you guys. So let me see here. Let me see if my YouTube is working correctly that I could get to it. All right. Yeah. So we good. We good. So my YouTube is working correctly. All right. And we are officially how short are we far as going over the 50,000 mark? Let's see here. Let me take a quick look here. Let me go to back office. All right. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, hit the like and subscribe to the channel. Yep. We at we're short of where well, we, we are 140. Uh, subscribe short of 50,000, right? So uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel, hit the like and subscribe to the channel. We have more than enough people inside the chat that you we, that can get us over that number before the night is over, all right? But let's go ahead and get into a family. And uh, I may have to, you know, uh, copy and, you know, do certain things on the fly because I don't have everything inside this presentation. So I may be... You may have hear me um, clicking over to other presentations or importing images, you know, that I didn't have time to put into this presentation. But I still want to make sure you understand that, you know, this uh, information that I'm presenting to you through the visuals. All right. So let's go to get into it. Let's stretch this out. All right. Let's stretch this out. Let's stretch this out. So, family, let's go ahead and uh, get into it here. And if you have any questions, let's be respectful, post it into the comment section. And again, the lesson for tonight, they know they're not the chosen. Let me say that again. They know they are not the chosen. Brothers and sisters, we are Yah's chosen people. We are the people of the book. And when I say the people of the book, we are the chosen people of the book. We are the blood descendants of the ancient Israelites. We are. We are the blood descendants of the ancient Israelites. 
you know, thanks for the heads up. And this is what I want to put this in here inside the I want you guys to see this. This is from uh, Tiger Tabby. He says, here, I already did it, but they keep messing with the unsubscribe button. And that's the point I want to make family that and, and I've gotten emails from people thinking that I unsubscribed them. No, that's YouTube suppressing the channel. You know, I know for sure we'd be a lot. We would have a, a much larger number than what we have now for our subscribers. But YouTube continuously to uh, uh, continuously unsubscribing people from the channel. Uh, they're, un, you know, unclicking or, uh, you know, the uh, the notifications and things along that line. So I really appreciate you, um, uh, Tigger, for, uh, you know, just the love and support and just sharing that. So that that way I can share with the people why it's important. If you think that you're subscribed or if you are subscribed, double check just to make sure. All right. Appreciate it, my brother. Thank you for uh, the support. Thank you for the heads up. All right. So they know we are the original people. They know that we are the people of the book. And and this is why uh, there's so many diff different things that are being put in place to suppress, to keep us from talking about this information, keep us from talking about certain things. This is why more and more, uh, the more we talk about this truth, more and more uh, you see or you hear the term anti-Semitic or anti-Semitic, making it so that way, even using their sources, showing their sources, declaring that who's who, you show their sources, you're still considered anti-Semitic. But yet we are Shemitic people. Anyway, we're not going to get into that. So they know they're not the chosen. They know that we are the people of the book. I'm working on one more video here for to close out the road to Savannah series. I'm going to try to have it done before the end of next week because I got to I'm going to share with you. <laughs> how even with their modern or Israeli language, they took some of the understanding of those words. Hebrew, they took Hebrew words from some, some of the African tribes or tribes in Africa, rather, I'll put it that way. Our brothers and sisters that are blood descendants of Israel to give meaning and give definitions to words that they didn't understand. And I got the proof. I got the sources. All right. So they know we are the people. So let's deal with some of the untruths. What are some of the untruths, family? What are some of the untruths that we continue to hear over and over again? That's why I put this image in the background when I put these graphics together where you see can't breathe. Family, we can't breathe without someone, uh, uh, you know, trying to put down our community. We can't breathe without seeing the impact of others stealing our stealing everything from us. Man, they taking our even our bad habits from us. You know what I mean? You know, they taking everything from us. They they have exploited our community. When I say they, other nations, other communities have fully exploited our community in every kind of way. And I'm going to show some uh some some proof here tonight. So what are some of the truths? What are some of the untruths that we've heard? Right? And this is you guys remember this here. Right. Uh, because I had a few people trying to say that Jerusalem, right, did not or Israelis did not make it uh, from did not forbid the people not to take DNA tests, you know, because based off based on this clip right here. Today, it is prohibited and you can Google this to do a DNA test in Israel. Totally forbidden. Wrong. It's illegal. It's a crime. You'll be jailed. If you do a DNA test in Israel, why? Because they know the truth will come out. You come from Poland, you come from Ukraine, you came from Europe, you came from everywhere else. And they were the original Middle Eastern Jews who lived together with the Muslims and the Christians for centuries, for centuries. So what happened to a lot of the Jews? And that's the question. What happened? See, when you hear that, or, or a matter of fact, some hearing that inside my videos posted in the comment section saying that that's a lie. So 
you guys know how I do. I like to go geek mode. Whenever I present something, I have sources. I properly vet the information that I, I am presenting, right? So, and I want to make this clear, family. You know, when you hear about the um, the different territories like Poland, when you hear about Romania, when you hear about Hungary, that's all still the same people. That's that's still the same people. We'll get there when we we'll, we'll cross that that bridge when we get there. But let's get some sources here. Because that's what gets a lot of content creators into trouble, not presenting sources. I want to give you sources so that way you understand this is not in a, my opinion. This is not me coming up with my own opinion. This is Jerusalem Post. This is not a, a publication here. This is a uh, a publication, right? This is a, a media outlet within that community. Jerusalem Post wants to fully understand your family genealogy, not without a court order, right? March 30th. 2019 and it says here want to fully understand your family genealogy not without a court order according to some ancestry websites there are indicators to tell you if you possess jewish dna or not if you live in israel and want to find out where your family comes from what do you do one thing is for certain an ancestry kit from the local pharmacy is out of the question, according to Yediat Aronat report. While millions of such kits have been sold in the United States, Israelis are forbidden to buy ancestry kits, or should I say, buy ancestry DNA kits from the store without presenting a court order. Let me say that again for those that are watching, those that are. Uh, that are in denial, Israelis are forbidden to buy ancestry DNA kits from the store without presenting a court order. As the Israeli government controls these types of purchases due to the genetic information law. All right, so this is making it clear that in that territory and that country, they have to, they, they can't just do like we do. If they even get caught of going to like the 23 and me's, right? They can get into trouble over there. So for those that are, you know, that want to say that, hey, you know, uh, uh I'm I'm that's a lie. No, nah, it's not a lie. I just gave you proof here, and I will drop this inside. Let me drop this link inside the comment section so that way you guys as we progress in this 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 uh presentation tonight you guys can properly vet the information you guys can confirm whether or not if i'm giving you facts or if i'm if i'm misrepresenting the sources so let me drop this inside the comment section there you go there you go all right there you go that's in the comment section. All right, so let's go ahead and continue here. All right. So let's go ahead and go here. So why did 23andMe tell Ashkenazi Jews they could be descendants from Khazarians? Why did 23andMe tell uh, Ashkenazi Jews they could be descended from Khazars, right? And this is coming from the forward, right? This is their this is their write up on it because they in this full article here and others they brag as if uh, from a perspective of having the twenty three and Me remove that reference for us to Khazars, right? So when uh, people uh, that are doing their DNA from that territory, they'll see uh, Ashkenazi when they when they see the Ashkenazi portion of their DNA, it'll circle that that territory where uh, um, the Khazaria Empire was, um, you know, stretches from Russia, Poland, Ukraine, Crimea, uh, what's some of the other places? Hungarian, Germany, man, the Khazarian 
uh, man, it was a huge territory. So it will still show those areas, but it will not show Kazaria. And that's important. Right. This is why you have many making so many videos trying to now, see, you know, when they don't see now that they're not seeing Kazaria there. Now they're trying to use that as if, hey, you know what? Uh, I, I'm, I'm Jewish, you know, and still trying to connect themselves to the uh, to Israel, to ancient Israel. Which is absolutely not true. As a matter of fact, I will copy over into this presentation and we'll break down the word Israeli for some of you guys that may need a refresh on that word Israeli. So nevertheless, what we see here, it says the genomics company 23andMe has retracted a statement made on the, the profiles of some users with Ashkenazi heritage that they may be descended from an extinct tribe from the Caucasus known as the Khazars. Inadvertently, you know, I didn't put the full here. So what are some of the untruths? See, let me play another, let me play another clip. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play another clip. And then we'll break down this clip as we progress here. Let me play a, a couple of clips here real quick. Now, this is the Ashken Ashkenazi Jewish professor, Dr. Michael Brown. And I want you to hear, for those that haven't heard it, but I want you to hear what he has to say about the Ashkenazi Jews. All right? And if you think that I need to hit the button, the stranger danger, danger button, let me know. Hit one after you hear this. If you, if you think that, hey, you know what, Pastor? That's a stranger danger. So you guys, whenever you hear, hear any of these clips that I share that may be all over the place, and you want me to hit that stranger danger, let me know. If you want me to hit this button right here. <laughs> stranger danger! Stranger danger! Stranger danger! Right. Type one whenever you want me to play the stranger danger, stranger danger. And if you want me after we play this clip of Mike Brown, uh, Professor Mike Brown, Dr. Mike Brown. Let me know and I will play. I will give him the stranger danger award. So here's the here's the clip. Here's the clip. So a little over a thousand years ago, as Jewish people scattered around the world had now emigrated in Europe and now were living in, in the Rhineland in Germany. They looked at the name Gomer in Genesis 10 and they connected Gomer with Germany. So they took on the identity of the name Ashkenaz. It has nothing to do with Ashkenaz in the Bible, which is a descendant of Yafet. It's just a name that was taken. Okay, it's that simple. Just like my last name Brown doesn't refer to the color of my skin. Or anything else, it was shortened from a, from a Russian name when, when my grandfather came over uh, at Ellis Island. The name got shortened to, it's just a name. That's all it is. So the idea that Ashkenazi Jews are descended from Yafet is a myth, 100% false. So it looks like, uh, let me look here. It looks like I'm seeing a lot of ones for stranger danger. And if you want to just type in stranger danger. Let me see here. I can use this as an opportunity to give some shout outs. Uh, Marcus uh, says stranger danger. Yaquaba says stranger danger. Who else says here? Awaken now, stranger danger. I I'll play the clip here. Q Kennedy, stranger danger. Daryl, brother Daryl, stranger danger. IMP, stranger danger. Who else here? Son of Jacob, stranger danger. Uh, Michelle Jones, stranger danger. Richard Jabbar, Stranger danger. Who else we have here? Tamara, uh, man, put straight ones across the screen. Stranger danger. Malacca, shout outs to Malacca holding it down up in uh, New York. Stranger danger. Uh, Elder, <laughs> she said clowns. I know that I know what she mean when she say this. Um, blessings to you, Elder, holding it down in California, and um, really appreciate the love and support. So appreciate you. She said, hey, stranger danger. Monica Dixon. Uh, I'm a, Mon uh, I'm a Dixon, uh, Stranger Danger. Let's see who else here. Uh, Sharice, Stranger Danger. Jay Smooth, Stranger Danger. Let's see here. Who else? And, and NECA, and excuse me if I mispronounce your name, 
uh, charge it to my head, not to my heart. But she says stranger danger. Let's see who else we have here. Octeria, we have stranger danger. Archangel, I can't read all of them because we have uh, quite a few inside the chat tonight. Uh, Brother Timothy, stranger danger. All right. So as I progress here, I'll I'll definitely uh, do some additional questions here just so that way I can give shout outs to uh, you guys for the love and support. All right. So you guys say stranger danger. So guess what? We're going to give we are going to give him the stranger danger award tonight. Let's give him the stranger danger. Here we go. Ah! Stranger danger. Stranger danger. Stranger danger. Now, come on, we have to we have to be real family. Now, if any one of us said the things that he said. They'll be making all kinds of videos off of us. They will be making all kinds of videos off of us if we said what he said. So let me play another clip because I want to allow you to hear a linguist, you know, world renowned linguist among their community. Let's hear what he has to say about what, uh, in, in conjunction with Professor Brown said, about the origins of the Ashkenazi Jews. No, let, let's, let's hear what he has to say. Well, there are two levels of discussion here. One is about the facts on the ground and what should be done with it. Turn to that in a minute. The second is questions of what terminology to use to describe what's happening. Here, that you can decide that you are willing to live in a bubble as distinct from the entire world. You're free to do that. There are three notions that came up. The biblical rights, which have absolutely no status, none. Nobody in the world can say 2,000 years ago, here's my story of what happened, so therefore I have a right to do it now. You can't live in a world like that. Nobody in the world ever makes such a claim. You want to make it? Okay. But then just admit, I'm out of the world distinct from the world. No, yes, totally distinct. If you really want to play that game, the Palestinians have more of a right to claim to be descendants of the population from 2,000 years ago than I do. My ancestors probably come from the Caucasus. Their ancestors come from Palestine. So he made it clear. Caucasus or Caucasus. Now, now we're getting into who? The Khazars. We're getting into the Scythians. We're getting into those territories when you start dealing with the Caucasus, the Black Sea area. So let's go ahead and deal with some untruths here, right? Now, you guys remember this here, but I'm going to uh, go through this again. This is from one of my videos I uploaded, but I've been sharing this source for years on top of years, probably almost what, uh, seven to eight years, this particular source, right? Highlight out of Kazaria evidence for Jewish genome lacking. And I had the privilege of having an actual discussion with uh, my cousin Benaya. Uh, we had a, we had an actual discussion with, uh, with uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Aaron Elhaik, right? And also my cousin, boom, uh, Bishop Dr. William Brown did a full interview on uh, with uh, this, gen this uh, world-renowned geneticist uh, earlier this year. And I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, upload. I think I have it on here, but if not, I'm going to upload it again. Some highlights from that. All right. So this is his publication here. Right. This is him refuting the the Ryland hypothesis. All right. But let's go ahead and get into it. He says here, Aaron Elhaik, a geneticist at the John Hopkins School of Public Health thinks so. In a recently published study of genome biology evolution, he is calling for a rewrite of commonly held assumptions about Jewish ancestry. Instead of being primarily the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel, present day Jewish populations are, finds El Haik or El Haik, 
primarily the children of a Turkish people who lived in what is now Russia, north of Georgia, east of Ukraine. This civilization, the Khazars, converted from tribal religious or excuse me, religions to Judaism between the 7th and 9th century. So I am working on a presentation right now for uh, to close out the series, The Road to Savannah. And I have some additional information I'm going to share inside that presentation that's going to deal with some of this here. So this civilization, the Khazars, converted from tribal religions to Judaism between the 7th and 9th centuries. The controversy cut into by El Haik works run deep, far past the lab bench. Among some circles, his conclusions are bound to be unpopular. This is the first scientific paper to prove the Khazarian hypothesis and reject the Rhineland hypothesis, he says, and with it about 40 years of research, although his findings will not be welcomed in all circles. Elhaik, Elhaik's interest is more medical than political, right? This is saying that he, the, the reason why he was bringing this information out was from a medical perspective, because uh, within the Jewish community, as we know them, you know, certain sicknesses that, you know, average sicknesses are much higher among that community. Matter of fact, I'm going to play a quick video here and I'm going to run and get a book and I'm going to share a book here. Uh, let, me, let me do this here. I don't share a lot of books um, in terms of putting it up on the screen. It's a lot of sources I have. I just, uh, you know, Use it as research, internal research. But I'm going to share a book here real quick. Let me show this clip here. Let me allow the uh, Kohen Hamadishi as he explains the Limbus. All right. Shalom, Dr. Kelly. Shalom, greetings, my brother. This is Kohen Hamadishi from Zimbabwe. I've been trying to get hold of you, but in vain. Uh, I want to respond to what you, to your, to your, to your question about the, about us, the Lemba people, coming from the from the white men. I don't know where they got that that that, that information from. Whoever gave them that information did for a purpose. Maybe he wanted to get some financial assistance and financial help or so, I don't know. Was definitely, definitely, we are not from the white person. We are not. This can be traced, this can be investigated. Whether using the DNA or using the oral history, uh, and you can use any type of way, a, a research you can use. You will never fight, uh, you will never find us being from the white Jews. The nearest you can get us is with the Yemenite Jews in Yemen. Those are our people. Those are our blood. Those are our kin. We left in, in Yemen when we went to Africa. There's no, we will not deny that. But we share the same name. All right, family. So that is Kohan Hamadishi, uh, elder of the Limba tribe, and he's explaining and refuting a lie that's been circulating, stating that uh, the Limba saying that they come from Caucasians. You know, that's what, uh, you know, some from within the Jewish community, as we know them, are pushing around like Abram, uh, you know, Rabbi Abramson, who's pushing that nonsense. And some even within the Christian sectors are pushing that nonsense. They never stated that. They never said that they come from Caucasians. But anyway, this book right here, right? Genetic Disorders Among the Jewish People, right? John Hopkins, right? This book has a lot of rich information in here. It even has that Rhineland hypothesis that I pointed out, but it, it lists, you know, uh, a lot of the sicknesses that's prevalent among that community that's at a much higher level, 
All right. So this is why when um, many of them go to the hospital, they ask them if they're Jewish because of the uh, the uh, higher level of medical issues that many of them have. And I'm saying this not from a perspective of trying to throw shade at anyone or being disrespectful or any kind of way, but that's just giving you uh, some information on uh, why, you know, some of the medical issues that they, they have to deal with uh, among that community. All right. So let's get back into it. All right. So that's why I just want to say and show you here why his, his concern was, was, was more of a medical perspective, uh, why he was getting to the root of this. You know, because you have to understand DNA, you have to understand uh, what, you know, any type of sickness is within your family. And this is why even today you get married. Uh, they want to know, especially if you have children, if there if sickle cells run in any once any, uh, you know, side of the family, whether it's the husband's side of the family, the wife's side of the family. They want to make sure they want to see if it runs, because if it does, then they'll tell you the chances are even higher that your child may be born with it. But anyway, let's get into it. So he says here, getting back to the, the, the lesson here, he says here, uh, El, El Hake's interest is more medical than political. All I want is to help my colleagues who are studying genetic disorders, he says. I hope this work will open up a new era in genetic studies where population st uh, stratifications will be used more. So, and then when we skip down, and this is key right here in this article, a matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and put this article inside the chat and you guys can, and I encourage you guys, I, I, pl I put these articles inside the chat for a reason for you guys to go back over it and you guys can vet the information and you can read it at your leisure. You know, you, you, you don't have to, uh, you know, be, really dependent on me just giving this information. You could go back and you could read this at your leisure. All right. And you can build up your library as well. So let me drop this in here. This is what I'm reading. And you guys can confirm to make sure that uh, and see that I'm not misre misrepresenting his works in this article, the, the um, information shared in this article. All right. So let's go to get back into it. So it says here, Previous studies had, for example, combined the question of similarity among and between Jewish populations and the question of ancestry and re re um, relatedness to non-Jewish populations. Elhake's view these questions separately. Let me say this again. Elhake viewed these questions separately. So he's dealing with in a nutshell, why you see uh, so many different groups within the Jewish community. You know, you have the Asians, you have the Hungarians, you know, why, why is it that there's such an extreme among them? And he explains it in the video that I uploaded and I encourage you guys to watch it. And um, I'll, I'll see if I haven't, uh, I have one of the formulas here. I'll, I'll try to get the other one here to explain how they tried to come up with hypotheses and you know all kinds of formulas to try to uh, address the contradictions, the holes. So previous studies had, for example, uh, combined the question of similarity among and between Jewish populations and the question of ancestry and relatedness to non-Jewish populations. El Hakes viewed these questions separately Jewish communities are less homogeneous than is popularly thought, he says. With Jewish communities along the former Khazarian border showing the most heterogen, um, heterogeneity, or her, uh, heterogeneity, excuse me if I'm butchering the word, his second question centered on ancestry. When comparing Jewish communities to their non Jewish neighbors, in other words, it says here, Caucasus or Levant, which is the Middle East. So that's another buzzword that you hear a lot in these uh, DNA circles, Levant. Most don't tell you that the Levant is, uh, and the word is used interchangeable with Middle East, right? And so with that being said, 
The Middle East is actually Northeast Africa. Let me say that again. The Middle East is actually Northeast Africa. Let me say it one more time, and I'm going to play a clip here. The Middle East is actually Northeast Africa. That was, that was created at the turn of the 20th century. So let me play a couple of clips just for those that are watching for the first time. Most Egyptologists and most Egyptologists and anthropologists, archaeologists of the Eurocentric persuasion will say that uh, Egypt is in Africa. They had to concede that, but then they still draw the line by saying that uh, they weren't Africans like that. In other words, they weren't dark skinned people. And of course, this is all part of the great deception. And the reality is that if they give up Egypt, ancient Egypt, ancient Kemet, if, if they give that up and say that that was a part of black Africa, then they will also have to give up Israel. And that's why they draw the line at Egypt, because if they give up Egypt, they've got to give up Israel. Now, we're going to go over here and I'm going to show you where Israel sits on the African tectonic plate, which means that Israel is north East Africa. Now, when we look at this map, this is the this is the Sinai. Okay? This is the Red Sea. This is Egypt. This is the Sinai. This is Israel. All right, this is Saudi Arabia over here. Now, if you see this in Hebrew, it says Haluak Africani. The African plate. Here it is right here. Israel is sitting right here. Israel is sitting on the Haluaka Africani, which means that Israel is North East Africa. Uh, without question, we are in Northeast Africa. We are landlocked to Egypt, with the exception of the Suez Canal, which was a man-made uh, ditch, a boundary now uh, between. In fact, it's not even really a boundary anymore since uh, Egypt has reclaimed the Sinai Peninsula. Uh, but nevertheless, even those of us who are Pan-Africanists in our thinking and Afrocentric, we forget and we leave off that portion of Northeast Africa and, and, and don't want to claim anything beyond that. Europeans classified this area as a Middle East, you know, and then since this is the Middle East, the other question, where the Middle West, where the Middle North and where the Middle South? They don't have no geographical terms like that. All right. So remember that family. So when you hear the term Levant is really referring to Northeast Africa. When you hear the term Middle East, that is Northeast Africa. So when comparing Jewish communities to their non-Jewish neighbors, Caucasus or Levant, in other words, Northeast Africa, which they refer to as the Middle East and also is referred to as Near East populations, which is the closest to Jews. So it's asking the question, which are the closest to the Jews? All your Asian Jews, in other words, Europe, Asia, your Asia Jewish communities are closer to Caucasus populations. So it's, it's saying here that the Jewish communities of Europe and Asia are more are closer to Caucasians, the Caucasus population not to Northeast Africa. He writes with Central European Jews closer to Italians, non-Jews as the exception. Not one of the eight evaluated Jewish populations were closer to Levant populations. Let's, let's remember Levant. Levant is not, I mean, Levant is interchangeable with Middle East. It's also interchangeable with Northeast Africa. Africa. Let me give a quick shout out real quick. Uh, I like to acknowledge um, my, my brothers and sisters that, uh, you know, that, that contribute to the work, what we're doing here. I want to say uh, thank you for Bithia, for uh, uh, Ahmad, the elder. You know, I really appreciate the love and support um, that she's been sharing over the years. Really appreciate you, Ama and family. Let's give uh, elder Show some uh, elders some love here. Thawada, which means thank you in ancient Hebrew. Pastor Kelly, for your hard work. Hallelujah. 
Thank you. I really appreciate you, Ama family. Let's show her some love right now. And also, um, brother Charles Miller. So let's show both of them some love right now. Family really appreciate the love and support. Really appreciate all that, what you guys have done over the years to get us to where we are tonight uh, or today. So again, let me read that last portion here, that last sentence. Not one of the eight evaluated Jewish populations were closer to Middle East population, which actually Northeast African populations. That's what this is saying. We see Levant. See, more and more, we were seeing more and more words and constructs that are being put in place to drive you further away from the truth. Further away from the truth, coming up with these modern constructs. When actually what they're saying is Northeast Africa. See, when you see Levant, it's not going to trigger the thought of you dealing with Middle East, per se. Northeast Africa. You just see you see this word Levant, but it, again, it, it's not making it's not dr really driving in or reinforcing that there's no connection. So now one of the eight evaluated Jewish populations were closer to Levant population or Northeast Africa or middle the Middle East. <laughs> OK, so. Let's let's continue here. So. The Israel. That Israel, right? That Israel over there, that Israel know that they are not from Israel, ancient Israel, Northeast Africa, but are from Kazaria. And I'm not saying that from an insult. <laughs> That's they are actually from Kazaria. And we want to prove that here. Let's go to Genesis chapter 10, starting at verse one. It says here, and actually we're going to, you know, actually I'll start at verse one since I have it up. So this is dealing with Noah, three sons. Now, these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, Japheth, or Yapath, and the Israeli is uh, Yapheth, but I'm pronouncing it from the ancient Hebrew um, pronunciation. But nevertheless, it says, now, these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, Japheth, and unto them were sons born after the flood. The sons of Japheth, Gomer, Magog, right? Madai, Javan, Tubal, Meshach, right? You, you, I'm reading a lot of Russian company, I mean, countries. Uh, I also read about, I'm reading about the Greeks, Javan, right? That's the Greeks. But anyway. Uh, we see here Maga, Mom, Mega, Madai, Javon, Tubal, Meshach, Terrace. Here's the, uh, did I? Yeah. Oh, uh, you know what? Let me, uh, I forgot to put, did I put it here? Yeah, I forgot to put one more group here, one more here. Let me put, let me do some here. Let me modify this real quick. Because uh, I forgot to put verse three here. So let me put verse three here because that's important. So you, you Bible scholars, you know, can ask the same question, right? Like, hey, wait a minute. I see Ashkenazi. What's up with that? You know what I mean? I see Ashkenaz under um, the sons of Japheth. So how? Wh why is it that you calling yourself Ashkenazi? Versus just saying, hey, ancient Israelites. Why? Because, well, I'll get to that source in a second. But let me just go ahead and put this in here. Let me put chapter on uh, verse three in here. Let's see here. All right, 10, verse three. All right, here we go. And let me fix this here. All right. This is what I want to really highlight. All right. So we read verse one. We read some of verse two. Well, actually, we did read the entire verse two. But here's verse three. This is key. And the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz. That's what you really want to pay attention to. 
And I know I didn't put a source up here about the term Ashkenaz, but inside this book here, let me see if I can get to that page. Right. And I'm going to read out of that book that I highlighted about the disorders among the Jewish community, medical misorder, uh, disorders. Let me see here. Let me see if I can see what chapter that's in. All right. That's in chapter one. Let me let me just read something real quick. Right. And I'm I'm going to put the book on the screen, too, if need be. All right. But let me just read this. Let me show you what, where, I'm, what I'm where I'm reading from so you guys can see. Of course, I can't read it at the same time, of course, because of the information. Let me just go ahead and change the view here. All right. So this is the book again that I'm reading from. Right. This is the book. Genetic disorders among the Jewish people. All right. And I'm and I am reading from page 12. Let me put it over here. Page 12. All right. And I'm reading from this pa passage right here. All right. I can't see it, but all right, I was trying to put it up. The book is just too big. All right. So I'm reading. I'm reading from here. And this is what it says. I may even take it. Uh, I don't have my phone in here. So it says here. It says here, Ashkenazi Jews make up approximately 82 percent of the world's Jewish population. During the Middle Ages, the Hebrew term Ashkenaz became identified with Germany. And thus, in a narrow sense, Ashkenazim are German Jews. All right. So I want to read that from the source here. This is coming from this source right here. Genetic disorder. So I'm giving you an actual source. Actually, I can also give you another source here, real quick. Let me see if I could pull it up real quick. Do I have it here? I may have it here. All right. Let me see here. I got I see the Israelis. We'll get to the Israelis here. The Middle East. I see that here. Let me get to. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Matter of fact, it's in that article. Here, let me see here. If not, I'll pull it up as we progress here. Let me see here. Middle East. Let me see here. Ch -ch -ch. Yeah, that one's about the Middle East. Yeah, I, I have it, but um, I thought it was in this presentation. Yeah. Oh well, I'll get I'll get it. I don't want to waste a lot of time trying to locate it, but I have a New York Times article. That explains it. Let me see here. Let me do one more thing. All right, let's see here. Let's see if it's this one. Yep, it's the LA Times. So I'm going to copy this over real quick. So that way you guys can see exactly what I'm reading from. I'm going to copy it over to this presentation here. All right. So that way you can see that this is not me making this up. I gave you one source, but I'm going to give you another source real quick. And then we'll we'll read some additional sources because I got some additional information I want to get to. So here we go. Let me... Uh, let me take this out. I have so many presentations. All right, there we go. All right, here we go. Now, let me go ahead and play, um, not play this, but let me show you this source. All right, LA Times Archives, 
arguing the race of the most fascinating figure in history. May 14th, 1989. This is uh, when this article was published. Arguing the race of the most fascinating figure in history. And this is dealing with Albert Einstein. But nevertheless, it says until the rise of the doctrine of white superiority. Oh, that's not it. I thought this was it. Nope, that's not it. Now, that's dealing with Cleopatra. Let me see here. I thought that was it, family. No, that's the Middle East. Nope. Yep. I have to get to it um, when I get to it. I know I know the presentation I need to go to, but we'll, we'll do that. This is about Cleopatra. This is showing and proving that Cleopatra was a dark, melanated woman. Uh, this this uh, really talks about that here. And as you see here, it says here, uh, um, Shakespeare in Anthony uh, and Cleopatra calls her Tawny. And that, you know, 20 is our skin complexion. All right. So let me go ahead and remove this here. I, I thought I had it here, but I, I don't want to waste uh, waste a lot of your time tonight trying to search for it. I know where it is. But when I get to that point again, if I have a break, I'll pull it up. But let's go to get into it. Let's go to delve back into this. So according to the Eastern Bible Dictionary, may God and this is dealing with um, Gog and may God and all that is connected to the Scythians, right? Let me see if I'll put the information here about the Scythians. Yep, there we have. So um, I didn't put the click here, clip here. Uh, Mike Brown was trying to say that the Scythians were, uh, they disappeared. <laughs> you know what I mean? The Ashkenazis, they just disappeared, which is a absolute, <laughs> uh, I'll just say it's not true. So let's go to deal with the Ashkenazis and let's see who the Scythians are. Okay, here we go. It says here, according to Eastern Bible Dictionary, 1894, Magog is also connected to the Scythians. Who are the Scythians? Okay, this is coming from the Britannica.com, Scythians. It says Scythians, also called Sith, Saka, or Sake, member of a nomad, um, nomadic people originally of Iranian stock known from as early as the 9th century BCE, who migrated west westward from Central Asia to South Russia, uh, Southern Russia and Ukraine in the 8th and 7th centuries BCE. The Scythians found a rich, powerful empire centered on what is now Crimea, right? So who are the Scythians, right? Because remember, we leave it up to Dr. Mike Brown He'll tell you that this this means nothing. He'll tell you that the Scythians no longer exist. All right, but let's go ahead and tell you, let me show you who the Scythians are, right? Uh, this is coming from uh, an article titled uh, Localizing Ashkenazic Jews to uh, Primeval Villages in the Ancient Iranian Lands of Ashkenaz. Now, pay attention to this source, and I'm going to drop this link inside the comment section. You guys, you know how we do. We share sources here so that way you guys can make sure that I'm not misrepresenting any of the sources that we pull out here. So let me do something real quick. Let me copy this link. All right. Let me drop this source here. All right. This is the source that I'm reading from. All right. Now notice what this says. Notice what this says. All right. It says here, let's go back over here to the screen. Analysis of 393 Ashkenazic, Iranian, and Mountain Jews and over 600 non Jewish genomes demonstrated that Greeks, Romans, Iranians, and Turks exhibit the highest genetic similarity with Ashkenazi Jews. Now, notice who you don't see here. Notice who you see excluded from here. These are all descendants of Japheth. And this is also confirming what um, the geneticist, Jewish geneticist, uh, Aaron Elhaig said that through his findings that the Ashkenazi Jews are related to the Turks, the Khazarians. 
because the Kazarian territory stretched all across that area. But nevertheless, it says here, again, analysis of 393 Ashkenazic, Iranian, and Mountain Jews and over 600 non-Jewish genomes demonstrated that Greeks, Romans, Iranians, Turks exhibit the highest genetic similarity with Ashkenazi Jews. The geographic population structure analysis localized most Ashkenazi Jews along major prim primeval uh, trade routes and northeastern um, Turkey adjacent to primeval uh, or villages with names that may be derived from Ashkenaz. So this is still all tying them all together. But notice what it says is Iranian and mountain Jews were localized along trade routes on the Turkey eastern border. We're not dealing with northeast Africa. But it says loss of maternal haplogroups was evident in non-Yiddish speaking Jews or Ashkenazi Jews. Our results suggest that Ashkenazi Jews originated from a Slavo-Iranian confederation. This is not dealing with uh, Northeast Africa. This is not dealing with, you know, the ancient Israelites, which the Jews call Ashen Ashkenazic. An example, Scythian. So Ashkenazic or Ashkenazi is connected to who? The Scythians. Though these Jews probably spoke Persian or Aseti, this is compatible with linguistic evidence suggesting that Yiddish is a Slavic language. This is, uh, again, this is where you get the term Proto-Indo-European, Pi. And this is confirming what this person here, I'll play this person again, this linguist here, who made it clear that the Ashkenazi Jews, including Professor Dr. Mike Brown, is from, uh, it's descendants of the Caucasus. Well, there are two levels of discussion here. One is about the facts on the ground and what should be done with it. Turn to that in a minute. The second is questions of what terminology to use to describe what's happening. Here, uh, you can decide that you are willing to live in a bubble as distinct from the entire world. You're free to do that. There are three notions that came up. The biblical rights, which have absolutely no status, none. Nobody in the world can say, 2,000 years ago, here's my story of what happened, so therefore I have a right to do it now. You can't live in a world like that. Nobody in the world ever makes such a claim. You want to make it? Okay. But then just admit, I'm out of the world. I'm distinct from the world. Not, yes, totally distinct. If you really want to play that game, the Palestinians have more of a right to claim to be descendants of the population from 2,000 years ago than I do. My ancestors probably come from the Caucasus. Their ancestors come from Palestine. So he's making it clear. He said to caucuses. Now, if we go back to Mike Brown and we can pick apart, I'm not, I don't have my hard drive here to put his other link. We were saying the Scythians saying that there's no relation between the Scythians and the Ashkenazis and they're the same people. But this is why you hear him talking, um, you know, in circles. This is why in this 60 second clip, He's contradicting himself. Now, no, here it is again. So a little over a thousand years ago, as Jewish people scattered around the world had now emigrated in Europe and now were living in, in the Rhineland in Germany, they looked at the name Gomer in Genesis 10 and they connected Gomer with Germany. So they took on the identity of the name Ashkenaz. It has nothing to do with Ashkenaz in the Bible, which is a descendant of Yafet. It's just a name that was taken. Okay, it's that simple. Just like my last name, Brown, doesn't refer to the color of my skin or anything else. It was shortened from a, from a Russian name when, when my grandfather came over uh, at Ellis Island. The name got shortened to Brown. It's just a name. That's all it is. So the idea that Ashkenazi Jews are descended from Yafet is a myth, 100% false. So he is filled with contradictions. He literally says that according to him, that his people took the took on the identity 
of the Ash uh, the Ashkenazis, the Germans. But then he says that his father or grandfather Brown comes from his name, who came over to this country from what is called Russia, which is what the territories of the Ukraine, as we're reading right here. But I'm gonna take it a step further. That's right, family. I see some note, uh, some comments here saying I gotta bring out the Stranger Danger. Let's give him the Stranger Danger award. <laughs> Stranger danger! Stranger danger! Stranger danger! Stranger danger! Stranger danger. All right. And real quick, I saw a comment here. Let me just say this real quick. You know, because that's a conscious community uh, quote by Happy Days is Ra'el in Hebrew is God. Is Ra God. Now, let me make this clear. See, that's junk. Uh, doctrine from the the conscious community or the unconscious community, right? The ancient Hebrew name is Yashara Al, right? And if you understand ancient Hebrew, right, you'll see Allah, not Al, Allah, not El, not getting into the supposed Ugaritic. This is why in uh, the Arabs, as far as the uh, you know, when we look at Arabic, you'll see the term Allahim or Allah, which simply in ancient Hebrew, right? That's still that that's synonymous to Allah Hayam, the plural, or Allah singular, and Aram, uh, Aramaic, right? The Most High, you'll see the term Allah. So you hear me saying Allah, and these are Shemitic languages, not. El, Israel, right? I say Yashara Al. Then this is where you get Yisrael. But that has nothing to do with the worship of Ra. Ra, Amen Ra, is a Roman name or Greek name for the Egyptian god Yamanu. So that has nothing to do with this thing of trying to combine isis ra l so that that has nothing to do with it so let's 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 uh you know not get caught up in some of that stuff that people are just circulating here you know trying to discourage um confuse people but anyway let's get back here so it says the jews called ashkenazic right in other words scythian though these jews spoke persian and or aset or aseti this is compatible with linguistic evidence suggesting that Yiddish is a Slavic language created by Irano Turco Slavic Jewish merchants along the Silk Roads as a cryptic trade language. Right? All of these different, all these, these three groups all fall up under the Proto Indo European languages, but nevertheless, spoken only by its originators. So, who are the Scythians? Let's deal with the Scythians. Let's go to the Anchor Bible, Dictionary, Volume 1. Let's see who the Scythians are. It says here, Ashkenaz. So the Scythians, Ashkenaz, right? We want to we want to break this down, right? Let's go back here. We want to deal with Ashkenaz when we want to see how Ashkenaz tie into the Scythians, right? Now, notice what it says here. First descendant of Gomer, who is the first offspring of Japheth, in the table of nations, Genesis chapter 10, verse 2 and 3, which we read already, and Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 27, Ashkenaz appears along with Ararat and many as a kingdom called upon to oppose Babylon. The name is identified with the Neo-Assyrian Iskuza, who appeared between the Black and Caspian Seas. Now, this is still dealing with that territory of Khazaria. In the 8th and 7th centuries BC, driving out uh, the Sumerians or Sumerians, uh, I'm butchering this name here. All right. So, uh, excuse me if I'm butchering the name here. But nevertheless, this is still dealing with Gomer, right? It goes on to say here, and threatening the Assyrians for Herodotus, these people came to be called Scythians. So you see, Scythians is connected to the Ashkenazi Jews. 
And I'm going to go here. I, I got I got a nugget I'm going to drop here in a second here. So it says Herodotus is giving you history. Herodotus or Herodotus, however you want to pronounce it. Herodotus, rather. I say Herodotus or Herodotus, however you want to pronounce it. These people came to be called Scythian. He's a historian that made it clear that the Egyptians were dark melanated people. He also, uh, you know, uh, gave some information about the Scythians, the behaviors of the Scythians, the reputation of the Scythians in his writings. So the correspondence of the consonants in Ashkenaz is Kuza and Scythian is obvious. Now, this is getting into the linguist, linguistic side of things. I'm not going to get into all of that. But let's fast forward here. It says, although cultural association reached back into the third and second millennium BC, present archaeological evidence for a distinctive Scythian culture begins in the seventh century BC, especially at, uh, I'm not going to butcher this here. Let's go ahead and fast forward here. Possible portrayals of Scythians appears on ninth century reliefs. All right. So this is giving you some. Uh, saying that they have some relics and they have information, uh, you know, that I mean, you know, uh, that has that bear witness of who the who these people are. But it goes on to say, but the first Neo-Assyrian mention of the Ishkuza occurs during the time of Sargon the second in the eighth century BC, right? Driving back the Sumerians, uh, or uh, it says the Scythians were able to push south to dominate Asia. And, and media in the latter part of the 7th century. About this time, a Scythian raid against Egypt was stopped. So we see, and this is being recorded by Herodotus, or Her you know, Herodias, however, however you want to pronounce it. I don't want to uh, keep going back and forth with the many pronunciations of it. Uh, but it says here, for the later history of the Scythians and the question of their identification with the enemy from the north mentioned in the first part of Jeremiah. And it tells us to go see the Scythians. So Ashkenazi, the Ashkenazi people are the Scythians. And so it tells us to see the Scythians. So according to the Anchor Bible Dictionary, the Scythians are the descendants of Ashkenaz, right? So Let's go to the Scythians. Let's see what it says about the Scythians. Biblical scholars sometimes associate the Scythians with Ashkenaz and with the bringers of destruction. So it's saying that these are a destructive people. These are a war-driven people. So it goes on to say, outside the Hebrew Bible, their reputation for savagery is alluded to in 2 Maccabees chapter 4, verse 2. 47 it gives some additional references i didn't have time to put these references in here to read it to you but you see it on the screen here and i want you to make a note of this here savagery because we hear that term you know tossed around a lot especially when it came to our com community from the people that have enslaved our community that declared war on our community they call us savages they call us barbarians they have all kinds of names uncivilized that they use to describe describe our ancestors so i want you to remember or make a note where it says here outside the hebrew bible their reputation for savagery is alluded to in second maccabees third maccabees fourth maccabees but it says four chapter four verse 47 chapter 7, verse 5, you know, just giving some sources. But anyway, the Scythians, called Ashguze by the Assyrians, appeared first, apparent, excuse me, apparently first appeared in written history in the annals of Asar Hadan and seemed to be centered at that time in what is today northwest Iran. According to Herodotus, right, uh, or Herodias, however you want to pronounce it, the Scythians ruled over all the Near East uh, for nearly, for it says for 28 years after, ent after entering the area from the north. All right. So I just want to, like I said, just give you a little history here. It goes on to say the Scythians continue to be mentioned in texts of the Babylonians, Persians, Greeks as allies and as enemies through the fourth century BC. So we see references of them. And notice what you see here. Scythians present, I mean, presence in the Near East 
is restricted to the Crimea and the shores of the Black Sea. Ovid records, uh, uh, it says here, Scythian life, or should I say records, Scythian life in the first century AD. All right, so let's go here. So the Scythians, so that way you can understand, the Scythians occupied what's called modern-day Russia, modern-day Poland, modern-day Hungary, modern-day, I mean, Germany. It, it, the Scythians or the uh, Ashkenazis, that's where they, they, they uh, dwelt at. All of that was their territory, okay? So there is another group of Russians who are connected to uh, the Russians and the Ukraine. And they are called the Khazars, which I mentioned. So the Jewish community, as we know them, falls under two main groups, the Sephardic Jews. And we'll deal with that another time. That's just a political term. Sephar, uh, Sephar, uh, Sephard re re refers to the Spanish that I, <laughs> that's a whole nother discussion, right? But we'll deal with that another time. And the Ashkenazi Jews. So the Ashkenazis are the uh, are the Eastern, uh, or should I say, East European Jews, which were found in Poland, Russia, Germany, and other parts of Western Asia. So this group of Jews make up 90% of what the, uh, the so-called Jews in the world. So this is coming from the Jewish Encyclopedia in 1905. Let's see what they say about the Khazars or uh, Khazars. Let's see what they say about it. It says, a people of Turkish origin. Now, this is going back, uh, validating what uh, the, uh, the Jewish geneticist Aaron El Elhake said about the Jewish community. Said that they are related to a Turkish people. They are related to the Khazars. So a people of Turkish origin whose life and history are interwoven with the very beginning of the history of the Jews of Russia. The kingdom of the Khazars were firmly established in most of South Russia long before the foundation of the Russia monarchy. All right. So, you know, we see here uh, again, the Russian history, and this is going on and just telling us again, the shores of black and Caspian seas, uh, since the first century of the common era. But it goes on to say historical evidence points to the region of Ural as the home of the Khazars among the classical writers of the Middle Ages. They were known as the Khazars or Khazirs. So this is just giving some different names of them. And it says, and in the Russian Chronicles, right? So I didn't put all of that here. So I encourage you guys to watch the lesson I did on Gog and Magog. And I really go in deep about breaking down who's who. But I want to just get to another key thing here. Remember I told you to highlight this quote here? Outside the Hebrew Bible, their reputation for savagery. Let's go back here and let me just get that real quick. All right? Let's go back here. Let's go back here. Uh, that's uh, Here it is. Outside the Hebrew Bible, their reputation for savagery is alluded to in Maccabees. So it's giving some sources here. So I want to want you to make sure you make a note of the savagery. Make a note of the savagery. I want you to make a note of that. So let's get back down. Let's get back down to this quote here. Now, I'm going to show a quick clip. Right. You guys are going to remember this. This is coming from that movie. The world. Leave the world behind. And I'm going to tie all of this in. So remember that movie, Leave the World Behind, that, that that's uh, a viral movie that's discussed, you know, th that's really being discussed among the different communities, especially ours. All right. So I want to say fair use, you know, because YouTube is doing all kinds of stuff, man. But fair use. All right. So what I did was I took the clip from the movie and I put some. Uh, news clips, audio underneath it, so that way you can hear how uh, that ship, right, ties right into slavery. That ship actually was a ship that uh, 
intersect uh, intersected uh, intersected uh or intercepted rather another ship slave ship stole some of stole our ancestors off of that slave ship and they took them and came to the coast here that's a whole nother story i encourage you guys watch the review that i did on that movie and i really go into the details of that i'm not going to do that here because i don't want to um go go there because it for the sake of time but i do want to highlight the savagery i want y'all to pay attention to the savagery and when i was thinking about the history of the Khazars, the Ashkenazis, all of these different groups that's connected. Think about how our ancestors were treated. So let me show you some piece of history that I'm sure that most of you guys, actually probably 99% of you guys don't know. Let's go to this article here. Researchers test 2,400 year old leather and realize it's made of human skin. This is a recent, this is an article that was published yesterday or two days ago that they found, they found what they thought, what leather, right? And to their surprise, this leather was made of human skin. So let me drop this link inside the comment section so that way you guys can go. Go back over it in your leisure. You know how we do. Let me drop this link because I know this is going to surprise you as we go uh, read some of the key points of this article. Let me let me drop this here. You know, y'all know me, family. I go geek mode. I mean, you guys got me going geek mode. I was trying not to go geek mode here, but you get me in that place. But all right. Now, notice what it says here. Notice what it says here in this article. Let me get back over to my other screen. It says here, again, researchers test 2,400-year-old leather and realize it's made of human skin. Why is that important? Why am I bringing this up? A group of horse-riding warriors kept some gruesome battle trophies. Scythians. In modern day Ukraine, made leather out of human skin, a team of researchers has determined, likely as a Maccabre trophy, sounds similar to the Maccabees, right? Trophy item. The discovery affirms a claim by the ancient Greek historian Herodias or Herodotus, uh, who wrote extensively on the Scythian way of life. So we see here, and this is just giving more information on him. Yeah, it goes on to say sources of leather found on 14 different Scythian sites in southern Ukraine. The manifold sources, sheep, goat, cattle, horses. And notice what it says here. And yes, human skin. Suggests that the equestrian Step grounds had a sophisticated knowledge of leather working. So this tells you, as Herodotus described these people, and that's why you see here in this source, it tells you that Herodotus wrote ex extensively about the, the Scythians, right? This is where you get the words, why, why they refer to them as savagery, barbarians. But why am I bringing this up, family? Why am I bringing this up? Why am I bringing this up? Why is this historical barbaric fact important to know? Well, let's go to this New York Times article here. Nat Turner's skull and my student's purse of skin. It says here, and I'm just uh, skipping down to a main part here. Nat Turner's skull was not the only one in circulation. 19th century newspapers occasionally advertise that a decapitated head had been discovered. Sometimes they were, uh, I could, yeah, uh, man, I gotta, let me fix this. I thought I saved it, family. My, my presentation is off here. Let me fix this here. Because this article also talks about how um, they were using our skin 
for leather using uh, our skin and other body parts for oil. That's why that tanker, right? That oil tanker coming on the coast, right? That's why that 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 tanker me you know represents a lot. Because on that tanker, remember it's a big oil tanker, singular. How much oil was can, would have been accumulated, you know, if you take all of our ancestors that have, that have been enslaved, the oil, you know, I believe the message that was being uh sent you know you know through that white line that singular ship is that is more than enough to fill up that tanker of our ancestors that have that was raped that was murdered that was kidnapped all right so let me do something real quick let me see if i can fix this here all right Let's see if I can fix this here. All right. So it goes on to say vigilantes often took trophies, proof in their mind that justice had been served. But notice what it says. They made purses of what's going on here. They made purses of skin and took the grease from the flesh and used it as oil. That's what they did with Nat Turner when you do the full research on them. Oil, grease, and all kinds of stuff. That's what they were doing to our ancestors, family. That's the significance of the white lion, you know, seeing that tanker come to the shore. But I'm not going to stop here. I'm not going to stop here. I am not going to stop here. Why is this historical barbaric savagery or savage fact important to know? I'm glad you guys asked. And I'm going to drop this link. Leather from human skin. Let me drop another link on you guys. Leather from human skin. Leather from human skin. I know some of you guys are like, well, what's the significance of that? Well, I'm glad you guys asked. Let me do this here. All right, there we go. All right, now notice what this says here. Let's see what this article says here. Right, this is the article. Leather from human skin. This is Philadelphia News. This is like 1888. I remember that two or three years ago, and this is, this person describing this interaction with a doctor here. He has a, he, he shares some additional information, which I'm going to share a couple of it, but I encourage you guys to read this at your leisure. It says, I remember that two or three years ago, I accident, uh, incidentally referred to a prominent physician of this city wearing shoes made from the skin of Negroes. He still adhered to that custom, insisting that the tanned hide of an African makes the most endure, enduring and the most pliable leather known to man. Only last week, I met him upon the street with a brand new pair of shoes. I looked at his footwear, as I always do. His pedal coverings have an irresistible, irresistible fascination. For me, and said with a smile, is the downtrodden African still beneath your feet? In the most matter-of-fact way, and without the shadow of a smile, he answered, I suppose you mean to inquire if I still wear shoes made of the skin of a Negro. I certainly do, and I don't propose changing in that respect until I find a leather, you said that's, that's, that's better. So he goes on to say in the same article, bearing testimonies of how they treated our people. He says here, the young doctor, and I believe this is another, in this article, he, he's given another testimony within here, 
right, of another another doctor. But it says the young doctor who presented them to her recently returned from an extended foreign tour. And he told her that he had purchased them from a uh, Turk in Alexandria and that he uh, did not know what sort of leather they were made of. But he supposed it was the skin of some wild animal. Now, he said it's a skin of a wild animal, but notice who he considered to be part of that wild an animal. As a matter of fact, the skin came from a Negro cadaver, which was once prone on a Jefferson College dissecting table. And, and the leather was prepared in Wamsador. The rosettes on the slippers wore deftly fashion from the Negro's kinky hair. Do you know, family, they actually used our hair to fill up pillows. They, they pull teeth out of our mouths to put in their mouths. George Washington didn't just have wooden teeth like they like the schools would teach us, the history teach us. He actually had teeth in his mouth from our ancestors. Come on, family. Come on, family. That's why I want to share this portion of it to make sense of that ship that you saw. Let me put one more testimony up here. See, these are still all the people that's from what? That caucus. We're dealing with caucuses, right? Come on, family. This is all still part of that family of that JFF. Let me do one more thing here. Uh, let's see here. I want to put one more testimony here. Let me see if I can pull it up real quick. This is the history that they're trying to erase before our eyes. This is why, you know, they, they're doing all they can, you know, to make sure you don't have access to this history. Books that you at one time you can it was free. Now they charging you for it or uh, jacking the prices up so high to discourage people from purchasing it. All right, let me see here. I'm going to pull this up real quick. I want to just copy. All right, let's see here. Man, they had cannibalism going on on those slave ships or warships. All right, let me share this real quick. All right, let me let me go to this article real quick. I'm just copying it over to this presentation. I know this is a lot to deal with, but we got to deal with it, family. All right, let's see here. Bear with me one second. I'm just copying this over here. All right, there we go. All right. Let me let me show you the savagery. Let me show you who truly are the barbarians, who are truly the savages. All right. Let's go to this article here. All right. This is Springfield, Massachusetts, Weekly Republican, Republican, April 28th, 1899. Negro burned alive in Florida. Second Negro then hanged. But let's see what they say about this person named Sam Holtz. Let's see what they say about him. Before the torch was applied to the pyre, the Negro was deprived of his ears, fingers and genital parts of his body. He pleaded pitifully for his life while the mutilation was going on, but stood the ordeal of fire with surprising fortitude. 
before the body was cool, it was cut into it was cut to pieces. The bones were crushed into small bits. And even up the tree upon which the wretch met his fate was torn up and disposed as souvenirs. The Negro's heart was cut into several pieces, as was also his liver. They ate him. There was cannibalism going on. It was performing, performing satanic rituals over our ancestors. Those unable to obtain the ghastly relics direct, direct paid their more fortunate possessors extravagant sums for them. Small piece of bones went for 25 cents and a bit of the liver crisply cooked for 10 cents. As soon as the Negro was sent to be dead, there was a tremendous struggle among the crowd, which had witnesses, excuse me, which had witnessed his tragic end to secure the souvenirs. A rush was made for the stake and those nearby, or excuse me, near the body were forced against it and had to fight for their freedom. Knives were quickly uh, produced and soon the body were, uh, uh, was dismembered. So again, even the tree upon which the wretched Sam Holt met his fate was torn up and disposed as souvenirs. The conclusion of the, well, I'm not going to get into that, but this is one of the images. Look at what they're selling. Look at what they're selling, family. Tell me what community had to go through this. You see it on your screen. You see it on your screen. I have photos of them having souvenirs of our hair and things along that way, along that line. See, this is what all those that have enslaved our people, they don't want to talk about this. They want to brush this under the table. They want to censor channels like this that are trying to get this this truth. If we want to talk about history, let's talk about all the history. If you're going to call people savages, let's talk about the true savages. Every person, every person, every country, every group that was involved in slave, enslaving our people were savages. They were barbaric. They was doing all kinds of things to our people. And this is just a prophecy from Deuteronomy 28 dealing with cannibalism, being forced into cannibalism. All right. So let's see here. Now, this is getting into genetic distances. I'm not going to go through that here. Um, that's in the video I did with um, the professor. Let me skip down for the sake of time. But let's go back to this article here. Because I have some additional information I want to share. Let's see how long we've been been going. All right. Well, wow, I seem like, man, it doesn't seem like we've been going for almost two hours. But let's keep it going, fam. Let's go a little bit longer because I do have to get up early in the morning. All right, but let's go a little bit longer. All right, let's go a little bit longer. Let me look at the contributions. All right, family, let's show some love for All Purpose Guy. Thank you for the love and support. And again, let's show some love for Charles Miller for the super sticker. And again, uh, Ama, that's in the building here. Let's show her some love as well. Thank you, uh, everyone, for the contributions tonight. I also want to see, I see one just popped in Hebrew, David or Dawad or Dawid. Uh, your lessons are truly a blessing family. Thank you. And thank you for, for uh, my brother, for the love and support. I uh, really appreciate it. And I don't take it lightly. Thank you again. And family, let's show uh, Hebrew David some love. Let's show all of our uh, brothers and sisters some love tonight. Thank you. And I, and I really appreciate it. Appreciate it. And, um, you know, let's see where we are. Let's see if we hit that threshold yet. 
Let's see where we are with the subscribe account. See if we got over 50,000 yet. Hit that number yet. All right, family, we are uh, 53 subscribers short of 50,000. So I'm going to encourage you guys, if you're not subscribed to the channel, uh, click the like and subscribe to this channel. All right. Share the video. Share the video. Now, this is dealing with race, right? Because uh, here, this is a Jewish publication, right? That is in 2017 written with the concerns of the Jewish community as we know them, trying to refer to themselves as a race, using DNA to uh, justify themselves as being considered part of the white race. Now, let me make this clear. I don't subscribe to the institutional racism because they use this to promote stereotypes. They use this to lump everyone into certain groups for further manipulation. They establish, use that to create a social identity for every group within it, primarily our group, to remind us of who was conquered and who did the conquering. You know, this is where you get into the red districting and all that other stuff, man. But nevertheless, this is a Jewish publication dealing with DNA. And this is one of the reasons why it's forbidden, because people doing that DNA and they're finding out that, hey, you know, and they're making it clear that they're white. Right. So it says here, learning your genetic makeup has never been easier than that than it is uh, in 2017 for less than the cost of a doctor's visit, some people are trying to use the service to find out or I mean find out if or to what extent they are Jewish, a phenomenon that worries historians and scientists. Buyers of mail order gene uh, testing kits do get solid information from them. So let me make this clear. This is saying that these tests do give you solid information. 23andMe, they're going to give you some solid information. Uh, ancestry they're going to give you solid information that's what they're saying here it says they learn where their ancestors were living nine generations ago some have even found living but long lost family members the danger expert says is that in relying on these kids to learn more about their genes users are uh perpetuating the notion that Jews are a race, a concept they say has no scientific basis. And guess what? Going to this source here, right, by R.G. Smedley on PBS website, right, the origin of the idea of race makes it clear that, you know, this whole institution that's an extension of the Roman caste system was big, what was created and based on no scientific discovery, research or discovery. Contemporary scholars agree that race was a recent invention. Somebody has to patent and that it was essentially a folk idea, not a sign, not a product of scientific research and discovery. This is not new to anthropologists. Okay. And when we go back here, right. Uh, I just, uh, this is why uh, they had a concern here. This is why a lot of their historians have a concern because more and more their people are finding out that they're not connected to Northeast Africa. The idea of race has historically slotted humans into a handful of categories, Asian, African, white, etc. But research has shown that there could be as much genetic differences within these races as between them, right? So that's I should have maybe I should have read this real quick. Let's go back to genetic dis distances real quick since we see the term here. Let me just use the source to explain it real quick. Right. The origin of Ashkenazi Jewry. And I encourage you guys to get this book. Right. This is dealing with. Let me make sure. Yeah. Uh, that's that's a slide shouldn't be there. But anyway, starting here. Oh, this is out of order. Let me see if I can fix this real quick because that first slide is important. Let me fix this real quick. All right. Let me fix this slide real quick. And this will, this will give you more of an understanding of genetic distances. And this book here uh, that I'm, I'm using as a source, 
really goes into the details of the formulas that they came up with to try to uh, justify the, you know, the, the issues, you know, to address the issues of, you know, number one, why do they all look different? Why are there so many extreme, diff extremely different groups within the Jewish uh, community? Because some would try to allude to, and I'm sure you guys probably heard of some of them say, well, hey, Jews come in all colors. Nah, we come in all colors. Now, the reason why they come in all colors and ethnicities and people groups is because of conversion. We as a people, we come in different shades because that's in our DNA. They come in different colors, different shades, different ethnic groups is because of a religion converting to a religion. So, and that's a fact. That's a fact, right? That's why, matter of fact, let me play this real quick and play this one more time. This is why you hear this guy says that being Jewish or whatever has nothing to do with DNA. It's everything to do with a religion. So let's go ahead and play this real quick while I uh, fix this slide. Let me see here. Where's it, where's it, where's it, where's it? Here it is. Does having Jewish DNA determine your Jewish status? Great question. The answer is your Judaism is determined by your mother. If your mom's Jewish, you're Jewish according to traditional Judaism. Now you can have a very high count of D Jewish DNA and that's awesome. That means you're connected to the Jewish people, but it doesn't necessarily mean you're Jewish. Don't forget, there are people that convert to Judaism and they have zero DNA and they're 100% Jewish. All right, so let's go ahead and Oh man. I think I messed my slides up here. That's a duplicate slide. Let me try to, let me see if I could pull this from another slide just to make sure that that's correct, family. Give me one second. My apologies for the hiccup. All right, let's see here. It's not in that one. Let me try another one. Let me try another one. Let me go to the other, another presentation. All right, maybe in this one. Uh, I thought it was in this one. All right, my my apologies, family. I thought I had it in here. Yeah, the slide is off, and I want to fix it. I don't like to give. Let me let me try one more presentation. If not, we'll just we'll just press past it. But that this is off and it's it's wrong. Let me see. Anyway, I'm not going to get into it. I'll just, I'll just adjust for now. We'll deal with. I'll just have to correct the slide because I know I'm wasting a lot of time. So let me go ahead and get this out of there. Let me fix this slide. So in a nutshell, this is explaining why you see the differences in the Jewish community as we know them. All right, so. Uh, this is telling you that they took 75 Caucasians, right? And none of these tests included any people from our community, no dark melanated people whatsoever. This is all 
uh, selected groups from the Europeans, the Asians. So seven, 75 Caucasian population, in other words, white, based on marker or nine markers, it says the genetic distances analysis showed that the East, the East European Jews were closest to the inhabitants of Thrace, the region shared by Bulgaria, Greece, and Turkey. And that, that is just bothering me. I want to, let me see something here. Let me try one more thing just to make sure. I think that's it. Let's let's do this. I think I may have. I think I may have. I can fix it here. Let me try it now. I think I know what it is. All right. All right. I think I fig. I think I figured it out. All right. Let's let's try it again. Because it's like I'm coming in at the middle of the sentence. All right, let's try it again. It says a large part of the study was devoted to determine to the determination of genetic distances between the different populations. Through this method, genetic markers from different Jewish populations are compared. The smaller the relationship, the more differences in the DNA in DNA may have arisen. Such differences are called distances. So it's trying to come up with a hypothesis, or should I say a formula, to try to, uh, in a nutshell, explain why you see such a wide variety of those people, you know, of the Jewish community as we know them. But this is going to prove that none of those groups have anything in common genetically. Now watch this. It says the smaller the relationship the more differences in DNA may have arisen. Such differences are called distances. 75 Caucasian, in other words, white populations, based on nine markers, the genetic distances analysis showed that the East European Jews were closest to the inhabitants of Thrace, the region shared by Bulgaria, Greece, and Turkey. Bulgarian Jews came next followed by 36 non-Jewish populations, and only then the second Jewish population, the Iranian Jews, which are Turkish people. Remember the article I read earlier? Other results showed a large Italian component in the gene pool, right? In other words, total variety of genes in a population. Of the East European Jews, and notice what this says, this is, this is the key. From all these results, it appears genetically, the different Jewish communities do not have much in common. So this is saying all those different groups that you see, uh, like the Asian Jews, the um, Ethiopian Jews, the Ashkenazi Jews, it's saying that they have nothing in common genetically. This is why you hear this guy and others uh, making um, that are making comments like this on, what makes a Jew a Jew? This is why it sounds so contradictory. It sounds like it's, it's, it's uh, him contradicting himself when actually that is the whole purpose of the word Jew, right? They created a construct for themselves, right? To um, basically be uh, similar to what we have Christian with Christianity, Catholic with Catholicism, we have here Jew with Judaism. But this is why you hear the contradictions like this here. Does having Jewish DNA determine your Jewish status? Great question. The answer is your Judaism is determined by your mother. If your mom's Jewish, you're Jewish according to traditional Judaism. Now you can have a very high count of D Jewish DNA and that's awesome. That means you're connected to the Jewish people, but it doesn't necessarily mean you're Jewish. Don't forget, there are people that convert to Judaism and they have zero DNA and they're 100% Jewish. Wait a minute, see that right there should confuse all of you guys that along with you know 
Uh, Mike Brown, both, matter of fact, let me give him the Stranger Danger Award as well. Stranger Danger! Stranger Danger! Stranger Danger! Stranger Danger! Stranger Danger! This is why Mike Brown's, Professor Mike Brown, this is why his stuff should confuse you. What he said here. So, a little over a thousand years ago, as Jewish people scattered around the world had now emigrated in Europe and now were living in, in the Rhineland in Germany. They looked at the name Gomer in Genesis 10 and they connected Gomer with Germany. So they took on the identity of the name Ashkenaz. It has nothing to do with Ashkenaz in the Bible, which is a descendant of Yafet. It's just a name that was taken. Okay, it's that simple. Just like my last name Brown doesn't refer to the color of my skin or anything else. It was shortened from a, from a Russian name when, when my grandfather came over uh, at Ellis Island. The name got shortened to Brown. It's just a name. That's all it is. So the idea that Ashkenazi Jews are descended from Yafet is a myth. 100% false. Stranger danger! Stranger danger! Stranger danger! Come on, family. Come on, family. Come on, family. We can't get around it. That's why we're hearing all these different contradictions, right? Even the rabbi, the, I mean, the um, linguist guy that I share with you, he holds on that principle as well about DNA. He'll say the same thing, that the DNA doesn't make you a Jew, even though he said that their origins are from the Caucasus. Come on, family. We're the ones that are under the scrutiny, though. So as you see here again, it says here. Uh, let me get back to my slide here. Shout outs to my sister, Carol, in, in the building. But it says here, genetically, the different Jewish communities do not have much in common. Often they appear to be more related to the population in, which, in the midst of which they live when its genetic material was available. So when did the Jewish community become a race? That's a good question, right? So I'm not going to get into all of this. This is the law of return, but this is getting back to here. Let me see here. This is what I already read. These are duplicates. All right. But this is them going, you know, that same article back at the forward with them trying to knock down the term, uh, uh, trying to knock down the notion that the Jewish community is a race. Because if more and more, uh, the younger generation doing their DNA tests and they see, wait a minute, I'm white. That's what they're finding out, that they're white, they're European, is causing more of a problem. And we'll highlight it here. Ashkenazi Jews often find themselves in the peculiar, in other words, weird situation of being 90% Ashkenazic Jewish and 99% European. So it's saying that they are pretty much European, 99%. 90% Ashkenazi and 99% European, meaning the Ashkenazi Jews are Europeans. That's what this is saying. This is the Jewish forward. Jewish publication of forward. Sephardic Jews may be told that they are mostly Middle Eastern and North African and less than 10% Ashkenazic. But it goes on to say, Stuart Schaffin, a traveler and blogger who writes under the name Broke Bleep uh, Stewart, said he brought a kid from 23andMe because even though his family insists they are exclusively Jewish, he thought there was a possibility that he had some non-Jewish ancestry I was curious because you never know, says Schaffman. Family stories are just stories. Schaffman, who learned that he is 99.8% Ashkenazi Jewish, basically saying 100% European, he said the test hasn't made much of a difference on his sense of Jewish identity. Judaism really informed me and informed who I am and my values and my worldviews, Schaffman says. 23andMe hasn't made me more or less Jewy at all. I'm just Jewy. However, Schaffman added he's Jewy and white, while other Jews, Sephardic Jews, Ethiopian Jews, can't claim that distinction. He's an ethnic minority. 
but a white one nevertheless. And this is the problem that they are scared of when they're having uh, the younger people in their community uh, grab hold of being part of the white race, because this is it, it right here. I get all the benefits of what? White privileged. Guess what? They're the only community that could get the benefits of being Caucasians and our identity because Shemitic is a subgroup from Afro-Asiatics. So they get to have um, be on both sides of the fence. That's basically what, what we see happening. Shemitic is a Semitic, which is actually Shemitic, is a subgroup of the Afro-Asiatics. So this is why when you actually do it from an academic perspective, this is why many are saying, wait a minute, how can I be anti-Semitic? How can I be anti-Semitic when I am Shemitic? Shemitic comes from our bloodline, come from our DNA, come from us. All right. That's why you hear the confusion. It's like, wait a minute. But of course, that's the academic breakdown of Shemitic. But what's actually in the uh, doctrine of within that community, they have their own set of information and uh, doctrine on what Shemitic is. All right. So. This article here. It's pretty much making it making it plain. I'm not going to read all of this, that the Jewish community, as we know them, come from 330 people in the Middle East. Well, well actually, it's not not Middle East, but actually in the uh, Middle Ages. That's what I want to highlight where I, where I want to get to right here. This is dealing with this. The, this is the. Uh, the um, German area, right? Middle Ages. They pinpointed, narrowed them down to 350 individuals. Not in Northeast Africa. Not in what they're calling the Levant today, Middle East. No, in Germany, that territory. 350 people. They determined who's who all the way back to the 8th century, 7th and 8th century. All right? So that's what that article explained. This one I'm not going to get into. Well, this this is more so explaining how a young Negro boy. I'll just read it since we're here. You know, and some of you guys may be watching for the first time. And if this is not too big, as a matter of fact, um, I want to say again, shout outs to my sister, Sister Carol. I'll drop the invite for you if you want to jump on, sis. If not, I understand, but I'm going to drop it. You know how I do. Let me drop this inside the comment section if you want to jo join us here. All right. But let me go ahead and go into here. Let me drop this article link. About the Negro, this this, this um, Negro, this Hebrew who was able to write and, you know, uh, um, ancient Hebrew. Let me get down to that portion. All right. This may because of the length of the link. It may um, how many characters in this link. It may not fully show in the comment section, but I'm going to copy it anyway. And if it does, great. If not, I'm going to have to put a list of the links that I shared inside the description box. All right. There it is. This is the article. Is another source here, family, for you guys to have at your leisure. Then I'm going to go through a couple more things and we're going to wrap it up. All right? Because we got some key information that we want to share that I want to share with you guys. All right. To make sure you guys understand we are the people of the book in terms of Israelites. All right. He is deaf and dumb. It comes from a uh, African town, right? Uh, it goes on to say a young African Negro has been in this city for at the last few days who claims to be a Hebrew. He is deaf and dumb and, and as black as the ace of spades. Now I want to make this clear. This is not being, this is not insulting the, the, the young boy, the young man, you know, when it says he's deaf, in other words, it's saying that he was, uh, he can't hear. 
when you say see the word dumb this means that he was born deaf he he can't speak he had, he's never for, uh, formulated a sentence from based off of hearing all right he cannot speak he cannot hear and it, when it says as black as the ace of spades making it clear that he is dark melanated so this hebrew is a dark melanated negro he carries a paper a pad a, a pad of paper with them and answers all questions by writing them in Hebrew and Lashkin Kodesh, right? Which excites uh, the most wonder is that he writes Lashkin Kodesh, in other words, language holy, right? Lashkin language Kodesh, holy, very rapidly. It is the language of the books of Moses and is made a special study of spoken and writes with ease only by the rabbis uh, and highly educated Hebrews. The Negro was sent to one of the rabbis in Hartford who is perfectly satisfied that he is a Hebrew. He says that he comes, he came from a large town in Africa where where there is a tribe of about 20,000 black Hebrews who speaks Lashkin Kodesh. In other words, ancient Hebrews, they are speaking, not just writing, but speaking it as a language and are quite prosperous. He says that his father is a rabbi in that town. That is why his father uh, took the trouble to teach him to write these languages, which, in, which needed an extra amount of labor on account of his being deaf. He says his people not only write Lashkin Kodesh, but, is, but it is their speaking language as well. He left home a few years ago and has seen a good deal of the world. In each town, he hunts up the Jewish section and there he gives, they give him clothes, food, and money. What surprises him, he writes, is that no Hebrew, no knows of his countrymen in africa and what he's saying is us the hebrews don't know who we are that's what it's saying us the hebrews that he traveled to you know that he uh traveling around coming across his own people that we don't know who we are that's right that's lashkin that's a german pronunciation in ancient hebrew is Lashan Quadash, right? So Lashan Quadash, if we want to say it that way. Lashkin is German, right? That's a Germanic influence. So appreciated privacy. You're absolutely correct. Lashkin Kodesh, that is Yiddish influence. That is not Hebrew. That is actually Yiddish. So I just want to give clarity on that. Thank you for pointing that out. All right. All right, so what are some of the actual truths? They're all in the, on this big lie. Let me go to one more thing here, right? Now we get into the thick of things here. I want to show a couple more things, and we're going to have to uh, do a part two to this because I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm reaching my, I don't reach my two hour, so I got, I'm going to go for another 10 minutes. All right. All right. So, so thank you, um, Steph, um, Stephen the Don. All right, actually, it's Lashan. Lashawan is not the primitive root word. It's actually Lashan is the primitive root word. And when you go to Exodus uh, or Genesis chapter ten, where you see language, you'll see Lashan. That's the primitive root word of Lashawan. So it's Lashan Quadash. All right, but appreciate it. All right, but um, I see someone in the back here. Uh, I posted the link, not for everyone to join in. That was just for my sister to join in. Uh, if she want to jump, join in. Uh, so let me do this real quick. Um, I'm not going to be rude. Uh, let me bring this person in real quick so I can get into this portion of the lesson real quick. All right, real quick, my brother, because I'm, I'm I, I didn't anticipate on anyone jumping on. But my sister, but what you got for us, real quick? 
Oh, no, brother. I was just appreciating your demonstration, man. I was the Muslim brother in the chat. And um, no, I was just appreciating, even when you brought up the uh, the topic of the form of the name of God when it says Elah, you know, you didn't discredit the Arabic. You didn't go into like an anti-Islamic tirade, like so many of, you know what I'm saying, that a lot of the Hebrew, I won't say so many, but a lot of the Hebrew channels that are around. So that's what made me subscribe, man. You know what I mean? I appreciate the knowledge. I'm a Muslim, but I follow what the Quran says. I don't follow what man says. And the Quran says to study the previous scriptures and not to deny them. It's a lot of Muslims that throw them away and say that they're tampered with and there's no need for them. But it, I believe that's the wrong approach. Absolutely. And I appreciate it. And, and, and I tell you, just by studying the languages, you know, because the scriptures, Deuteronomy 17 and also Deuteronomy 19, tells us by two or three witnesses, right? You know, we have to have two or three witnesses. So studying the language, you know, when I start really studying the name, it's like, wait a minute, wait a minute are you serious? Allah, you know, that's, that, that's not a derogative term. And if you study ancient Hebrew, you'll see it the same way, just like um, uh, Aramaic. You know, in Aramaic, you'll see Allah. So it's, you know, these are different Shemitic languages, all still under the same umbrella. So how do we get Elohim, you know what I mean? So, and to your point, a lot of that help perpetuate uh, poor teachings and kind of like a spook doctrine. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I definitely can agree with that. Um, when it comes to the previous scriptures, I read them every day along with the Quran because it's almost like a, a trilogy. You know, you can't just pick up and watch Star Wars and start at the third movie. If you picked up the New Testament and you discarded the Old Testament, when the New Testament refers to certain characters, you wouldn't even know who you was talking about. Absolutely. 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 And man, my brother, I really appreciate you being on. And um uh, I'll be doing this again this weekend. And if you if you um if your schedule is available, jump on and uh, you know, I'd like to um converse with you more. But I really appreciate you. Um, with the love and support, thank you for joining the channel and thank you for uh, enlightening the people just to give them clarity, even with the languages and with, with, with uh, your belief system. And so um, one of my, my, my uh, things that I hold on to is that regardless of what, we're, what we believe and what we don't believe, it doesn't change who we are. You know what I mean? If my yes. daughter came to me and told me she, she don't believe in uh, Christ, I'll be disappointed but she's still going to be blood, my blood descendant. You know what I mean? Uh, religion, uh, this colonized mindset, have us thinking that, well, if you don't believe what I believe, then you no longer my blood. But they don't do that to each other. So, right. so I really appreciate you jumping on. And um, feel free to jump on this weekend when I, when I open it up again, because I know I'm sharing a lot of information, and I can't even get to all what I have in this presentation. But I really appreciate you, my brother. And thank you again for the love and support. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me on your platform, brother. All right. No problem. Peace. Salam. All right. Salam to you. All right, sis. Hi, how you doing, sis? Uh, Shalom, I'm Bronick. I'm late to the party. I forgot you were live tonight. Yeah, I'm you know, I kept uh, missing the lesson. So I was like, let me go ahead and do it. And so um, I'm going to get into this final stretch. Mm -hmm. um, so I want you, you know, hold on for a second here. Okay, I'm going to get ahead. into this final stretch and then, then we'll uh, go ahead and uh, talk about it here okay. real quick. All right. Go ahead. All right. Let's see here. I'm just going to mute you here for a second. Oh, you already did it. Okay. All right, family. Let's go ahead and get into this final stretch here. Right. They know who we are. They know that we are the people of the book. They know this. They know this. They knew this before they even came to the shores to enslave. They know who we are. And I'm going to prove this to you. They know that we are the people of the book. So let's start with this source here. and We're going to build this up. This is coming from Atlas Geographics or a complete system of geography. Now, this is not a misspelling. Uh, but remember, we're dealing with Old English. So it's a little, a little different how it's typed out. So 
if I fumble over my words, you, you know, it's, it's making sense of trying to adjust to reading the old English, as you see here, right? If I'm, I'm just going to give you an example here. I'm going to zoom in. So you see here, this is old English. You see how complete is spelled here. And then um, you see here, um, right? This is an F here, but actually it's an S. It looks like an F, but it's actually an S. You see here, uh, an F, but it's actually supposed to be illustrated. So if you see me, hear me fumbling, that's because I'm trying to, uh, you know, uh, make my adjustments on the fly. All right. So this is old English. Okay. Not, not to drink. Okay. I just want to make that, make sure we're clear. We're not dealing with old English because people hear me say, well, he said old English. No, I'm not promoting the old English. I'm not promoting the malt liquor. All right. But it is a language. But anyway, this is coming from page 38 of this book. All right. It says so much for the whites. We shall treat the blacks when we come to Guinea. In other words, Negro land. Come on, family. I know what Negro land is. It's right on the map. Seven was the 17th century African map. This is the territory. This is what they marked the area saying, hey, this is where you see a lot of our ancestors. They targeted that. They came up with that land. I mean, that name of that whole territory of Israelite tribes there that they can enslave. All right. So it goes on to say, and the Cape of Good Hope, where they inhabit. Leo says there are other kingdoms on the south or southern frontiers of this country, which are inhabited by a rich, industrious, and just sort of people. Judaism was the religion of the ancient Africans for a long time. So it is telling you that, guess what? We were, even though they say Judaism, but what they're telling us, we were practicing Torah well before the Christians came there. It says, it says here, Judaism was the religion of the ancient Africans for a long time and succeeded by Christianity. But Mohammedan, Mohammedanism prevailed in the 208th century of Hegra when the Jews, Christians, and professors of the African religion that could be found were put to death. Yet, in a uh, process of time, their uh, intestine, excuse me, um, that's why I'm hesitating so I can make sure I pronounce these correctly, quarrels made them neglect Muhammad's law and revolt from the caliph of Baghdad, for which they were severely punished by the Mohammedan caliphs who caused their books to be burned. Now, this is interesting, right? Because this is saying that um, the Muslims in this area at that time burnt, were burning up a lot of the books of the Hebrews, right? That's in this area. It says, on suspicion that the knowledge of the arts and sciences prompted them to contemn Muhammad's law. I think it's supposed to be condemn, but anyway, but any, you know, dealing with old English, the Africans on the coast are still very uh, gross idolatrous. So, you know how you do, keep in mind, we're dealing with uh, how Europeans write about our ancestors. Right. So I want you all to not to get offended, but this is how they wrote about us. It goes on to say that those of Barbary continue to worship right? Interesting, right? I just read to you how the Scythians were, right? But now the same people in terms of that's part of that people group when we deal with the Scythians, when we deal with uh, Gog, Magog, and all those guys, uh, Meshach, Tubal, all of the Russians, all of those guys, they are all part of the descendants of Japheth. And guess what? I share with you some of the, barbar of the barbaric, savage things that they did thousands of years ago, and that they're still uh, that they're still doing today, lynching our brothers and sisters. So it goes on to say here. All right. Uh, where do I want to get to? Let's skip down here. It says Upper Ethiopia worshiped the Lord of heaven before the Queen of Sheba went to Solomon to be instructed. Um, let's see. 
uh, man introduce, I believe it's trying to say, but uh, it's it, like I said, excuse me, family, because this is old English, but in the law of Moses and the prophets, when they embraced Judaism, as did also some of the inhabitants of lower Ethiopia, right? So this is just giving you some information here, but it says here, upper Ethiopia worshiped the Lord of heaven before the queen of Sheba went to Solomon. So it's saying even before Solomon came into play, that relationship with queen of Sheba, the Israelites, right? in this territory of Ethiopia were already practicing Torah. It says to be instructed in the law of Moses and the prophets. So when you read scriptures, all through what many will refer to as the New Testament, you will see the law of and the prophets. Christ says this in Matthew chapter five, uh, when you get down to verse 16 and 17, when it says, think not that I come to destroy the what? Law, which is also referred to the law of Moses, which is also referred to the law of Yah, right? Think not that I come to destroy the law, which is those first five books, right? In your Bibles, it may be categorized as saying the law of Moses. It may say the Pentateuch, Pente five, right? Those are the books of law, the books of instructions. Then when you go beyond that, now when your book Bible may have it categorized as major and minor prophets, but guess what? They're the prophets. And again, the only reason why you see the difference between major and minor is nothing to do with their message and uh, the, the, how can I put it, the severity or the level of importance. What it is, is the size of the books. Like Obadiah is only one page, right? So that is in what they call the minor prophets, not because of the message, but because of the size of the book. All right. That's what this is saying here. So we see the law and the prophets. So this is making it clear that before the birth of Hamashiach, before his disciples came into play, that in Ethiopia, before Solomon, right? Before Solomon had his relationship with the Queen of Sheba, they were uh, teaching and practicing out of the law and the prophets, all right? So this stood out for me. It says, for which they were severely punished by the Mohammedan caliphs who caused all their books to be burned on suspicion. So what were some of the books that was burned, right? And when we go to this article here, Erasing History, Ancient Timbuktu Manuscripts, one written in Hebrew, torched by Malayan or Malayan uh, Islamists. Now notice what this says here. It says, and if the ongoing excavation at the Temple Mount designed to purge all Judaic artifacts and hence ancestral link to Jerusalem are any indications Islamists seem to be good at destroying ancient relics and attempt to rewrite history, right? So this is telling you that uh, Timbuktu during that time, many of the uh, our ancestors, many of their uh, Hebrew writings were destroyed. That's what this is saying. It goes on to say here, it says, where priceless manuscripts of Timbuktu, including one written in Hebrew, had been preserved for posterity. It says, while most were written in Arabic, one of the manuscripts reportedly burned in a wooden trunk was written in Hebrew. That's right, family. That's why, you know, uh, you know, we have to stand, uh, really understand the importance of learning history. This is why I'll play a quick clip here. You know, this is First African Baptist Church, Savannah, Georgia, where you have Hebrew writings on the pews. Let me play a couple of clips real quick. I'll highlight a couple more things and then I'll bring my sis in and we'll close out. Here we go. This is coming from uh, some video clips from there. Here we go. Let's see here. This gentleman right here. Huh? What happened? No, this is the gentleman right here with the camera in his hand. Wave your hand. The pastor. James Wesley Carr. Yeah, James Wesley Carr. No, no. What's your name? Oh, Kelly Richardson. Kelly Richardson. Pastor Kelly Richardson. He is a great, great grand nephew. Yeah. Nephew of one of our uh, first pastors. Wow. Yeah, as a matter of fact, that's his uncle right here in the corner of the action statement. I'm going to to your left. <laughs> 
You got the eyes. <laughs> you look just like them. You got the same eyes. Anyway, come on, guys. Come on. That's funny. That's funny. I feel looking like Look on the outside edge of the pews. Look on the outside edge of the pews where you are. You see the different markings alongside the edge of the pews? They represent the different tribes that made up our congregation back then and spoke over six different languages among themselves. These were small tribes enslaved by larger tribes and sold to Europeans as they came along the African coast. One of the major languages they spoke back then was that of Aramaic and also two of Hebrew, which means the writings read from bottom to top. Ashalam alaikum. Which means, which means, peace be unto you. It's not a Muslim term. It's actually the same greeting which Christ gave into the disciples when he met them in that region. Most countries in that region read from right to left. Here in America, we read from left to right. That's why the pastors in the St. Glass window up front here are going in numbers two through seven from the right hand side over to the left, to the left, to the left. This is First African Baptist Church, the oldest black church in North America. The building built by slaves. The gentleman that laid the first brick laid the last. The balcony hold pews that actually were built by slaves. They have the oldest information in this building. That information is written in cursive Hebrew writing. All right, so this is our heritage family. This is the stuff we need to be taught. This is the stuff that many are kicking against the pricks. This is why we hear clips like the one that I, I play here from time to time about the threat. Let me play it one more time and then we'll, I'll, I'll give a couple more things. And then we're then I let my sis let loose here. But this is why we hear uh, comments made by that community like this. The major problem of Israel is with the young generation of the black community. Black life matter starts there. I had last week a dinner, sit down dinner at my house with some of the people which are considered the leadership of the black community. And so and this is why, again, we're hearing this DNA doesn't matter stuff by these people like this. Does having Jewish DNA determine your Jewish status? Great question. The answer is your Judaism is determined by your mother. If your mom's Jewish, you're Jewish according to traditional Judaism. Now you can have a very high count of D Jewish DNA and that's awesome. That means you're connected to the Jewish people, but it doesn't necessarily mean you're Jewish. Don't forget, there are people that convert to Judaism and they have zero DNA and they're 100% Jewish. All right. So doesn't it sound? Once we get involved and we start proving what's right and what's wrong, all of a sudden it doesn't matter. Anyway. Let's go to let me go to give a couple more things and we'll wrap it up here as far as in terms of let my sis come in. So here it says here that there were a Hebrew manuscript that was burned. Right. So. Let's go to another thing here. This here just showing proof that in Jeremiah, hey, we had a history of burning up information, right? Destroying our own information. Jeremiah chapter 36 talks about how the king burnt up the book of Jeremiah. So no matter what, the oldest book of Jeremiah is not the original. Why? We'll see here. Let's see here. It says here, um, and when, it says, and they went in to the king and to the court, but they laid up the roll in the chamber of Elisha, Elisha Ma, the scribe, and told all the words in the ears of the king. Verse 21. So the king sent Jehudi to fetch the roll, and he took it out of Elisha, uh, the scribe's hand, uh, chambers. And Jehudi read it in the ears of the king and in the ears of all the princes, which stood beside the king. Let's skip down to verse 23. And it came to pass that when Jehudi had read three or four leaves, 
he cut it with the penknife and cast it into the fire that was on the hearth until all the roll was consumed in the fire that was on the hearth. So we see that he he burnt up the roll and Jeremiah was told to write it again. Just notice what we see here. Then the word of Yahweh came to Jeremiah. After that, the king had burnt the roll and the words of Baruch wrote at the mouth of Jeremiah saying, take thee again another roll and write in it all the former words that were in the first roll, which Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, had burnt. All right. So let's get back to here. Let's let's highlight something real quick. Now, uh, it goes on to say in this source here, Atlas Geographics, uh, or a complete system of geography, ancient and modern for Africa. It goes on to say here, this is another interesting thing that I highlighted here. It says the present Christians in Africa are partly strangers and partly natives, some of them slaves to the Turks and barbarians and others free. But here's the kicker, because we know they're not, they're not dealing with Caucasians being enslaved. Notice what it says here. Some of the Jews, this is dealing with our brothers and sisters in this territory. Some of the Jews who inhabited both sides of the Niger, y'all know how to really pronounce that, derived themselves from Abraham. So this is confirming these people here being Israelites. Others fled hither from Asia when Vespian destroyed Jerusalem or Judea when uh, was uh, uh, man wasted by the Romans, Persians, Saracens, and Christians. Some were banished from Italy in 1342, from Spain in 1462. These are dealing with Negroes. This is dealing with the Spanish Inquisition. This is dealing with our brothers and sisters, Negro Israelites. From the from the Low Country in 1350, from France in 1430, and from England in 1422, these all differ in habitat. I mean, habit, and are divided into several wealthy and numerous tribes, but have no dominion, and it says are despised of all nations, and so abominated by the Turks that they are not admitted to be uh, Mohammedans unless first baptized and then made use of only to receive their customs and gather in their taxes. These are not dealing with Caucasians. These are dealing with Negro Israelites. Come on, family. It says again, re reiterating, it says some were banished from Italy in 1342, from Spain in 1462, from the Low Countries in 1350, from France in 1403, and from England in 1422. So are there any proof Negro Israelites were in Spain and Portugal? Absolutely. You guys know this source, right? Memoirs of the Secret Service of John Mackey, Esquire. In other words, he was a lawyer during the reigns of King William, Queen Annie, and King George I. Oh, did I put it up in here? You know what? I forgot to put the um, the other one in here as well. But it's, it's all good. But notice what it says here. This is still confirming. Let, let me just go here. It's describing the appearance of uh, Lord uh, Earl Edward, right? You know, who's in a political position here. Senior Edward Viller, right? He's, he's becoming what? Uh, be, being uh, put into a political power position here. I'm not getting into all of that, but nevertheless, but the key that I want to highlight here is, let me go back here, I'm going too fast here, where it says, describing his physical appearance as man like a Spaniard or Jew of about 50 years old. So it says, tall, thin, very black man like a Spaniard or Jew about 50 years old. So we're seeing here in this public of this source here, right? Let's go back here. We see here, and it's it, and it's dealing with uh we're dealing with the territories like uh England, we did we're dealing with London, we're dealing with those territories, and it's making it clear. And as we see here, Scots, you know, it's giving different areas here, but we see that 
they refer to the Jew or, or the Israelites of that time being what? Black or dark melanated people. That's why it says here, going back here, man like a, uh, it says very black man like a Spaniard or Jew about 50 years old. All right. This is dealing with the Spanish Inquisition. I'm not going to go through all of these, but guess what? This is letting you know. Uh, I'll just read one of these so you understand who they're dealing with. It says, this circumstance induced King John to hasten their departure from Portugal for which purpose ships were duly provided according to the agreement. But such was temper of the captains and sailors that they subjected the Jews to the hardest possible conditions. They're not enslaving Caucasians. They plundered them of their goods and valuables, even to their very clothes and landed them naked and bare of everything on barren, barren points of the African coast, leaving them to die of starvation or to be sold into slavery to the Moors. Nor was this, the king rested from their parents, all children between the ages of three and 10 of those Jewish immigrants who from poverty or otherwise had omitted to pay the capital uh, cap, uh, capitation tax on entering or who for, were forced to remain in Portugal and had them transported to the newly discovered island of St. Thomas, which I proved in some of the other presentations that King Solomon visited this area, which then swarmed with alligators and other beasts of prey to be brought up as Christians. But the key is we need to identify who these people are. Real quick, it says here, right? Several of them having two or 300 Negroes that worked in the sugar mills. So these Portuguese, it says here, the Portuguese that dwelt on the inland or island and formed the Neanderthalers that lived, that, that uh, few lived about 50 years there, yet notwithstanding the great gain tempered them to uh, tarry several uh, of them having two or 300 Negroes that worked in the sugar mills that John the third king of Portugal sent a colony thither above 200 and uh, 200 years before whom though the unwholesome air destroyed yet the pal the place was not left desolate and uh, it says for he sent new inhabitants who first settled in Guinea next to Angola and lastly, on the island of what? St. Thomas, that so they might be the better uh, better used to the heir that the said king sold all those Jews for slaves that refused to embrace the Roman religion. So these are Negroes that were sold into slaves, those that did not want to embrace Roman Catholicism that did not want to embrace that religion. This is now we get into the Spanish Inquisition. And this is giving proof. This is not dealing with Caucasians. This is not dealing with that, I would call it a deceptive word, the Sephardi or Sephardic. Just like we have Israeli, meaning that word means that you are what? Um, born in a territory, but you're not originally to the territory. But that's a whole nother discussion for the term Sephardic. But anyway, this is making it clear that those were Negro Israelites. That's the point that I want to make. I'm not going to read all of this. All right. But family, we're going to have to, uh, I'm going to close out with this last thing right here. And sis, uh, have at it once I bring this here. Let me just pull this up here. Yeah, this is just showing you that there were Negroes in Amsterdam, uh, England. This, this source here highlights that. But we're going to cut it right here because it's kind of late. It's not kind of late. It is late, right? So I know, sis, I had you hold it for a second. But anything you want to share with the people? Because I know I covered a lot. Well, you've done this lesson so many times. This is about, I think, what, your fourth or fifth time I've you've done this so far? Yeah, so I kind of, like, mixed it up a little bit, kind of made yeah. it. I added some additional stuff, too. You didn't catch the early part of it. Right. I kind of touched on more of the behaviors mm -hmm. of the Scythians like 
um, them um, using human skin right, for leather. Right, right. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. Did they here in this country? I mean, furniture, leather, um, teeth, shoes, um, all that was from our bodies. Our hair, our skin was used as leather for making pouches, um, um, shoes, satchels that goes on the the horse, um, you name it. We were used, our body parts was used for all of that. So absolutely. I wanted to make something clear in this chit, chit chat that's going on in the, the live chat that I've been looking at while you were doing your discussion. Number one, since this topic is about DNA, the word Genesis, the first book of the Bible, that word means DNA. Actually, it, absolutely. Gen, um, genetic. I mean, generic. Right. I mean, genetic. Rather. Right. So let's get that understood. The Most High obviously knew at some point in time we need to know who everybody was and who the people were in this, on this, in this, on this planet and who belonged to who and who came from who. And Genesis 10, 11, 12 breaks down the genealogy of the family that left, that was left after the flood and who their, their descendants were and where land they lived in and the language that they spoke. I keep hearing this, this tit chat in the, in the live chat discussing that we're not Hebrews. Well, let me go back to Shem in Genesis 10. When his son, I think it was grandson, Eber. Eber means Hebrew. Anybody who's born under Eber or Hebrews, that includes Ishmael, who was a son of Abraham, that includes Esau, that includes everybody that's in that line that's under him, that came from his loins, or Hebrews. And when he got down to Isaac and his sons, Esau and Jacob, who are Hebrews, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. So his descendants have the nationality of Israel to their children. So we're Israelites. So they're Hebrews and Israelites. Not Esau, he's just Hebrew. Well, you know what it says real quick? I think part mm -hmm. of the problem is many get caught up with what they are saying. Yes. Some of the examples of our brothers and sisters. Because I've heard other people try to say, well, I'm no longer going to call myself a Hebrew. I'm not going to call myself an Israelite because they're allowing um, a handful of people to basically, in a nutshell, have them walk away from those terms. And like you pointed out, right. you know, Hebrew, Abraham was a Hebrew. Yes. You can't get around it. Never All right. of Abraham's sons and daughters, everyone was Hebrews. Hebrews. Everyone, as you pointed out, under Eber. Ibar, Ibar, right? Ebri is what you say, how you pronounce it in the Israeli. Correct. Ibar, Yah, guess what? Are Hebrews. Correct. So whether you want to say, oh, well, you know, that's the that's the English. Well, guess what? You don't speak full Hebrew is your, your language. So and, we know that part. Hebrew is a transliteration. And that part. Right? Let, me so, correct, let me correct something in that too while you're discussing what you brought that up about the language and, and speaking. I also read in the chit chat that um, we couldn't read. That's why they kept the information from us. Oh no, we could read. Let's get that exactly. Straight. We could read and we can speak. We couldn't read what they their wrote. language. Exactly. Their language. We couldn't read English. You, we still having problems reading English, but we had our own language. And as our ancestors died off, oh, that, hold, that part. Hold of on the one second, sister. Okay. Hold on one second. I'm going to say this one more time, and let's be respectful. Uh, Neo uh, Mongol Hebrew is not just a language. Exactly. You read the scripture, you see that it says Abraham the Hebrew. <laughs> they weren't saying Abraham who speak in Hebrew. Correct. So let's be respectful here. And I'm going to leave it at this. Hebrew is an ethnicity. The language is also called Hebrew. Correct. Because Paul, when you see Paul's writings, 
he said that he was spoken to in the Hebrew language. Correct. So let's make sure we 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 put things in its proper perspective. And I'm going to drop a scripture here that explains that it, it, it it's not that hard. If someone say yeah. that they're English, right? Do you question <laughs> whether or not English the language or English the person saying that he's uh, his ethnicity is he, he or she saying that their uh, ethnicity is English? It's right. clear with that. So if English is a people, it's also a language. Hebrew Correct. is a language, but it's also a people group. Come Chinese, on, let's not make Chinese something is so a people simple. Is also a language. <laughs> Absolutely. Japanese is also a people and it's also a language. Come on, people. It's not, it's not exactly. So this is why I get, uh, it's a pet peeve of mine, because some of our brothers and sisters will say, the white man is Esau. That's not correct. Because when no, what God. you're saying is all the Caucasians are Hebrews. Well, and what about Nathan? Thank you. So I just wanted to just make that clear to, to make sure for those that are seeing this in the chat, I want to give clarity to that. And uh, Sister Carrie, you could go ahead. I'm gonna drop a couple of uh links and I mean um scriptures in the chat while you while you're rolling. And um, you know, it's it's like I said, it's just that simple. Sometimes uh, people want to just be, you know, how can I put it? Like the old, uh, like the old saying, it's a difference of having a disagreement mm -hmm. versus being disagreeable. Yes. Well, it just proves to me that nobody's read the book. That's all it is. Because well, those that are having that, that doctrine haven't read it. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And it's proving yeah. the chat. These people that are saying the stuff in the chat have not read the book. They have not read Genesis. They have not read any part of Genesis. Because had they read it, they would not be saying what they're saying. Because it's plain and simple in the book. Yeah. It was outlined in, in, a, in a family tree for us to follow. But nobody ever read it. And that family tree go throughout the whole book. Beginning of every book, it goes over the genealogy. To keep intact the family. So you'll know what's going on. But again, it exposes you because you're not reading. You're, you're going off rhetoric that you heard from somebody else and you bring it here. But we're going to correct you here. Absolutely. So now let me give you the language, right? Let me just take you to Acts. I'm going to drop this in the, in the chat as well. So again, uh, Esau descendants were Hebrews but they weren't Israelites, right? Correct. They were Edomites. Right. The Edomites are Hebrews. Correct. But they're not Israelites, no. right? Big difference because they're not the descendant of Jacob. Correct. So let me give you another one. Let me, this is showing that the term Hebrew is being used as a language. I just dropped it in the chat for us. Hebrew being used as an ethnicity, a people group, but I also dropped a link, I mean, um, verse where Hebrew is being referred to as a language. It's just that simple family. All right. And if, you know, for those that, you know, if you keep uh, posting that in the chat, we're going to have to put you in timeout because we don't want to confuse those that are truly uh, trying to focus and pay attention. All right. We don't exactly. want to be a distraction. So what you see on the screen here real quick, and I'll turn it back over to my sis because I know she got some other things to say. This is that map that I refer to uh, that uh, shares how King Solomon and along with other Israelites traveled, you know, uh, and as you see here, notice what you see here, Hebraeus. This is telling you this is the path of the Hebrews. Of course, it, there was no, uh, you know, way to pass through here. So they had to go all the way around, as you can see here. And this territory right here, this is this island right here is so Tome, right? So I just want to give you guys a visual. And this is a little information on this map here. I'm not going to read it all, but this map here is giving you a little more information on it. And you'll see Ophir. When you read Kings, you'll see how Solomon is dealing with uh, a Hiram, you know, to uh, since, you know, like bringing back um, gold and all of that from this territory, Ophir. So Ophir is the territory that they went to here. But as you see here, let me show this one more time. 
this map here, this is Sotome, and right here is what is called the Gold Coast. All right. There's no coincidence that they go into the Gold Coast, this area. This is kind of like a rest stop for ships to port for going to the Gold Coast so they could bring gold back to Solomon for the temple. All right. But you got to sis. I'm turning it over to you. I want to also say this. Um, they wrote this history that you that you have been going over tonight for one reason, one purpose only. It was to show their records of what they did, but they were proud of what they did. And they wanted to have a reflection to give to their um, their children for generations to go on, because we were never not to come out of slavery, according to them. We were always going to be an enslaved people. So there was no need for us to know this information because the information was for their record keeping and for their children to continue the legacy that they created when they started all of this. But now that that's over with and we're now coming into the awareness of who we are and we're digging into this information, that's why they're in a hurry of trying to stop DNA testing. That's why they're in a hurry and try to destroy information. That's why they've taken hold of the narrative of the media to put out that their tool word, anti-Semitism, to control us and to shut us up. Until we understand that, then you'll understand why you need to go and read and read with comprehension. Read the Bible. Leave this other stuff alone and just learn the book. When you learn the book, you empower yourself so where you can speak intelligently to people and speak correctly. We have enough rhetoric and stuff in these streets that we have to go back and clean up every single time. But this history that these people wrote in these books was for one purpose only, was for to show their work that they did and how proud they were of what they did and to give to their children to carry on. Not for us to know about. They never dreamt that we would be digging into this information like we are now and exposing it. Absolutely. Which is why, which is why they have to keep up telling everything oh, is a lie. How can it be a lie? You wrote it. And we can prove the evidence of what you wrote. Ledger Absolutely. after ledger. Article after article is all there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, family, let's not, let's not make things complicated. Let's keep things simple. You know, uh, all this other stuff is just creating more confusion. You know, it's simple. It's just that simple, it you is. know, and these are things that many will use to trip you up with, uh, going into the scriptures again, as uh, my sister said, read, you know, don't get yeah. caught up in reading information um, like secondary, third uh, sources. Start with the main source. Yes. Start with starting with understanding Genesis one and one. Right. Yeah. If you don't understand Genesis one and one, you're going to be off from that point on. There, there are people that are teaching that don't even can't even fully explain and teach Genesis one and one, or even teach the entire first chapter that are teaching and have platforms and teaching our brothers and sisters and spreading all kinds of confusion. Mm -hmm. Because if you're off about the first chapter, you're going to be off moving forward. Absolutely. All right. So any other things you want to share sis, as we get ready to wrap this up? No, you did an excellent job. I mean, the part I popped in on, like I said, you know, you, you taught this so many times now it's, it's unreal. I mean, I, I know it forward and backwards now especially with Benea too, adding on to his, his touches that he does with uh, Portugal and Spain, which is a whole nother can of worms that um, you can go into in that whole system of, of the Spanish Inquisition. But, and it's amazing how we were taught in school that that was all about white people. And that yeah. was all about our people the whole entire time. That's, that's, that's the, the architecture of, of, of lies of what Satan has put into the world. And we have to undo all of that by any means necessary. We have to get this truth right and understand. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let me go through these um, super chats real quick. And then um, we'll, we'll give final words. 
and I see a request to close out in prayer. No, not a problem. Let's start with private C. Um, um, private C. I um, want to say uh, thank you for the love and support. Come on, Pastor Kelly Fire. I really appreciate um, the love and support. Uh, Brother Douglas, thank you for the love and support. Family, let's show some love to uh, private C. Um, let's show some love for Douglas Worley. Really appreciate the love and support. Also, let's show some love for Tangi. Oh, here we go. Tangi Yaya. My thing is acting up here. Thawa, Pastor Kelly, for your in depth lesson. I appreciate all you do for Yashara Al. Thank you for the love and support as well. Really appreciate it. Again, if had it, if it, had it not been for you guys, I'll just be taking a walk by myself. So, really appreciate the love and support uh as well all right thank you for what is this walk fan not sure what that is but uh really appreciate the love and support and forgive me if i mispronounced your name so um but oh, thank that's, you for that's, the love that's that's swag that's swag swag fan 100 you know, he's from the swag and i'm, I'm guessing he's probably uh the florida a and m 100 i'm guessing i'm just just put it out there i may be wrong but that's swag fan Okay. That. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm in geek mode. So I'm, I'm reading things literal. So, um, uh, also anti-American American from a Muslim brother who appreciate your open-minded mindedness, really appreciate you for jumping on it. Thank you for the love and support. Looking forward to having some, some discussions with you, but appreciate you again. Also, uh, Hebrew David, uh, let's show some love for Hebrew David. Uh, as well as all purpose guy, Charles Miller, and um, our uh, Amma in the house, the elder in the house. Uh, really, thank you for the love and support, Amma, and thank you for the blessings. And yes, uh, at your request, we'll close out with prayer. And family, let's show every you know everyone here on the list love tonight. Really appreciate it. And again, uh, I see one more here that came in. Uh, David Israel, thank you for the love and support as well. Uh, sis, any last words? Anyone you want to throw aside the garbage can before we wrap up? Um, nobody offhand right now. I'm too, I'm too caught up in the in the the chat of chatterization, as as you will, it's going on in the chat room. But I don't have anybody to go in the trash can. So, you know what? Take that back. Put uh, Doctor Brown. I, I left you a uh, comment on your video you dropped this morning so put dr brown and that other guy that talks about um if you are born of the jewish woman you're jewish but if you convert to judaism you still can be a jew put those two in the trash can yeah they, like i said they've been making up stuff that's not even biblical. <laughs> it's, so, it's so funny now and, and people run with that stuff though it's that's hilarious. the sad thing about it it's so there's hilarious. not a line of text that supports that stuff it's too funny so we'll it's put them in the garbage funny. can And we'll we'll add something to it. We'll give him a chair as well. Oh yeah, give him the chair. So we got we got to give him the chair. Where's my chair at? Where's my chair? You almost need to give him Batman too. So let's give him the chair. We'll give him a three piece, and that'll that'll be it. We'll give him a three piece. Mm -hmm. Where's the three piece? Where's my three piece? Get him, Robin. And we'll give him the order to go. All right. So, family, really appreciate the love and support tonight. Uh, we'll be back. We'll be back on. Um, uh, definitely not um, Friday night, but we'll definitely be on Saturday night, and we'll we'll continue with the discussion here. But um, in the words of the Most High in Exodus chapter 14, verse 13 to 14, the words that the Most High gave to Moses uh, as Israel, um, they came out of Egypt and they came to what seemed to be a, a dead end. Water in front of them, the Egyptians coming up behind them. The people began to panic and the Most High gave 
Moses these words of comfort and encouragement to the people. He said, fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of Yahweh. These Egyptians that you see here today, they will never have power over you ever again. The Most High will fight for you. But here's the kicker family. We have to hold our peace. Now, the Hebrew word that you will see there, you will not see Shalom. Others will say Shalom. And from um, Arabic, you'll see Salam, right? But in the text, you will see the word Karash. Karash means be quiet. In other words, sometimes we have to learn how to stay silent, keep quiet when we're going through certain adversities, right? So can't go back, can't stay here, keep moving forward. And I'll close out with a word of prayer real quick uh, as requested. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you for allowing us to just have this uh, session tonight. We thank you for everyone within the sound of my voice. I pray, Heavenly Father, that as this lesson continue to go forth, that it break down, it really breaks the strongholds, tear down the walls that was created by uh, our oppressors to that cause division among us, whether it's religious division, whether it's uh, division of just any other beliefs, whatever the case may be, the divide that these other groups that have enslaved our people have caused and built up these walls. And we just tear down those walls right now. We say ma zabak, which in ancient Hebrew means to slaughter, right? It means to slaughter. It's the word altar, which comes from the root word zabak. So we slaughter it right now, Heavenly Father, any strongholds of our of your people, anyone that's dealing with depression, we say ma zabak. We slaughter it right now. Anyone that's dealing with oppression, Ma Zabak, we slaughter it right now. Anyone that's dealing with any family issues, any uh, you know, uh generational curses or territorial curses and spirits, we say Ma Zabak. Anyone that's dealing with trouble in their finances, Ma Zabak. Anyone that's just dealing with that spirit of loneliness or feeling alone, Ma Zabak, we slaughter it right now. Meet the needs of your people right now, Heavenly Father. Bring healing in the areas that need to be healed. Make us whole in your sight. Make us presentable in your sight. Make us whole in every aspect of our lives. Repair relationships. Repair relationships. These are the things that we lift up in the mighty name of Yahawashai, Ha Mashiach. We give you all praise. We give you all the glory. And we give you all the honor. Aman, Aman, and Aman. And remember, can't go back, can't stay here. And guess what, family? Keep moving forward. Shalom. Shalom. Listen, Genesis chapter 11, verse 1. Explains the genealogy of Shem. Shem was a black man in Africa. If you repeat this back, Genesis 14, verse 13. Abraham steps on the scene. Being a descendant of Shem, which is a fact, means Abraham too was black. Abraham, born in the city of a black man, called Nimrod, grandson of Ham. Ham had four sons. One was named Cain. Here, let me do some explaining. Abraham, Isaac was the father. Jacob had 12 sons. For real. And these were the children of Israel. According to Genesis chapter 10. These were the children of Israel. According to Genesis chapter 10.